So you, you know how in our, like Carly, the, the kid would always be like, okay, and we're live. But it was always pre-recorded, so it wasn't live. Can I, can I tell you guys a secret? I've never watched iCarly. Me neither. Not a single episode. Not even really sure what it is. I've seen every episode of iCarly. My brain fills it in and it turns into Alex Mack. Yeah, Alex Mack is fun though. I all, oh, all yeah, I know, no. she can turn into I know everything about iCarly because of Quentin reviews, but like I have not watched a single episode of iCarly. Okay. okay, so the show Alex Mack is an actual good show. Alex Mack, she wears a hat. Yep, it's fantastic. I liked Animorphs. I didn't like Animorphs. What's wrong with you? I don't need an alien. It was about to tell war, me. Brian. It was about war. I, it's beautiful. I don't like science fiction that has the word war or Animorphs anything. Animorphs could happen, man. I don't Saying want... you don't like science fiction about war, it's just like you don't well, like science fiction. Yeah, yeah that's that's that because it's all like, you know. Star Wars has the word war in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or it's post like Star Trek. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to come... look. I Carly is a show that I would watch with my younger family members. They enjoyed it. I enjoyed them enjoying it. I've seen almost every episode of iCarly. I don't like that show. What's it about? I don't. It's a bunch of little they shits have, of a YouTube channel. It's about like early, like, it's about a group of kids that are making a, like, podcast nearly. What a bunch of fucking losers. Oh my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, they're doing, like, online digital creation before, but it's like Pirate Radio E. Yeah, it is. It's like their school website computer. I don't know. Yeah, because like. It's very analog. Because they're not using like a platform yeah. like YouTube or, you know, Apple or whatever. It's, you know, it's all the fictional stuff. And mm-hmm. <laughs> instead, it's so like, it, it didn't have an Apple logo as the technology, but it had like a weird pair. So the, the set design was funny. Anytime I need to use a, a draw a laptop and animation stuff, I put a banana on it just just for the fun. But every any animator out there who's had to draw a piece of technology just puts a pear or a banana or something on it. Bananas yeah. are kind of your thing, though, aren't they? New? Only mine. Mm-hmm. I'm the only person in the yeah, world who just, loves bananas. That's what I said. Um, it's yeah. very Freudian if you think about it. <laughs> oh, you see, I was worried it was going to come across like that when I said it, but then you just. You leaned in and went that way. Yeah, no, Neva's taken that statement as her own. Yeah. It's like in everything, everywhere, all at once, instead of hot dog fingers, I have a banana penis. (laughs) 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 Your face. (laughs) It's been a long couple of weeks. Shields are low here, trying not to, just trying to survive, you know what I mean? There are a lot of possibilities, John. You have to respect the ones that we don't know of. Whatever makes both of you happy is all I care about. Oh, we're not happy. Welcome to the Let's Fight a Boss video game podcast. The world's strongest video game podcast. To my left, it's Banana Penis. It's like... <laughs> I swing up. Words. Sweet. It's banana. And to my right, it's the ass slapper. It's Brian. Uh, it's Mike John's bottom earlier on, and his ass clapped back like jello into the cusp of my hand, and it stung me. This is a true thing. If that anyone happened. ever sees me in person, do not try this. Brian has built up an emotional crud twenty years thick. He can do things no one else can. It won't go well. Okay, so when people are mean to John on the internet, I'm like, don't do that. You, you, I do that. You, you both get real fucking salty about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, because it's like that's our thing. <laughs> Why the fuck? You is gotta this? earn that. <laughs> yeah, you jerk. I was thinking about like what we could do to kind of start the podcast on a fun note, and I thought maybe we just get straight into strategy talk. And just skip all media. Oh no, sorry. Start with all media. It's hot. It's hot, everyone. So. Yeah, we've had a heat wave. Yeah. So, um, with that in mind, it's Let's Fight a Boss Improv Theater. Oh, Neve. No. <laughs> Neve, you're the manager of a small convenience store. Your only co worker at the minute is Brian. Brian is a slightly older gentleman. His life is falling apart. His wife has told him that he's leaving, but he loves this job and he's happy he has this job. The only problem. Brian has been stealing hot dogs one a day for the last 18 years, costing the, costing the store an estimated 
$48,000. You need to either get the $48,000 off him or fire him. <laughs> I'm a really bad manager because I'm just kind of like, you know, it's just one hot dog a day. Neve, corporate are furious. I'm sorry, Uncle Tim. <laughs> I am someone's uncle still. I'm not someone's husband anymore. <laughs> I know, you've told me many times. Um, you've been eating hot dogs on company time. Brian, you start getting chest pains. <sighs> oh, it must be my broken heart. The only cure is a frankfurter. As long as it's not a heart attack, do it outside the shop, please. But I need you to give me the hot dog money. Is this how business works? I don't know how it works. Brian, your left arm starts tingling. <sighs> do you smell something... That isn't hot dogs. <laughs> it's all I have sustaining me since Sally left her mortal coil. <laughs> How did your wife die? She fell into a hot dog machine. <laughs> she tasted uh, delicious. Oh, oh. So you're eating the hot dogs to kind of feel close to her? She is inside me. Brian, uh, your, your breath tightens. You think you're having a heart attack. You live a life and you try to live an honest life, but sometimes you make mistakes. Neve, watch out! The talking horse just broke into the shop! <laughs> it's me! Wild Tim again! This fucking horse, every fucking improv. <laughs> it's like a Neve, fucking... get him under control, he's kicking uh, things over! Hey, I don't know, I'm grabbing him. Hey, Neve! How's it going, partner? Could you call an ambulance or a horse? I need help. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you Wiley are a Tim, heart attack. Okay, Neve, you never choose handsome, between beautiful getting horse. the horse out of the shop no. and helping Brian with his heart attack. No, I have a plan. Okay. You're a beautiful and handsome and wild stallion. I need you to take this man to a hospital. Please, I I can't do anything by myself anymore. Wallet Tim's not gonna do that, Neve, because Wallet Tim doesn't believe in laugh, only death. Oh no, Wally Tim's attacking What's the what? customers. I can't help. I may or may not be dying. I, I could see Sally again. Um, I Neve, flipped the open Neve, you signs have, you closed. Have, you have, you have... There's a chainsaw behind the... Okay, Neve, there's a chainsaw behind the thing. You have enough for one enough can gas. of gan one good charge. You can either use it on Wiley Tim, but then you hear a t you feel a little tug down by your ankle and it's little Brian, and Brian says... Decapitate me, baby. <laughs> well, I won't kill a beautiful stallion. And then I so cut the Wiley Tim's head right off. You still have a joke, sorry, man. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> and scene. Poor Wiley Tim does not make it out of yet another comedy improv. Maybe yeah. next time. I just think, you know, we, we could have this show uh, on the Lower East Side in New York. And we would fucking print money. Neve, you do look cute with glasses. That's, no one looks not cute with glasses. I don't know. Someone called me Harry Potter before and I never really emotionally recovered from that. I think that might have been me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll do it, all right. Like, that kid I fucking love, I love sucks. I those moments when someone says one thing and it just rocks you forever. Yeah, and I was just like, fuck. My hair was pretty shaggy that day and they are quite round and I lived under stairs. So, so it's like you're not wrong that's like the the, the time traveling homeless man for me i told you about that before didn't i yeah fucks me up still oh my god i just remembered a very good story this was in college and john and i were sleeping in the bed together because that's where he needed to sleep what because he, he, he needed a bed for the night and i had a bed so we were in the bed together and john john and his partner and a couple of friends from his partner's college had gone to it was the wax museum and john was telling me about this very annoying friend of a friend that was there and he was like i couldn't quite put my finger on this guy though like there was just something off about him and he reminded me but it also bothered me and then facebook was you know popular at the time and there were some photos published on a friend of a friend's album that you were tagged in i think and we went through the photos and we saw the guy in question and john puts his hand up to my laptop screen but covers the lower half of this guy's face only showing the bridge of his nose and his eyes forehead hairline it was me 
<laughs> it was a doppelganger, <laughs> but only from the that. upper yeah, half. Yeah. And, we so... both, and we both started what? screaming. <laughs> and it still fucks me up. So when John covered the lower face, did you see it instantly? Oh yeah, yeah, like, no, it was fucking. <laughs> yeah, like so we saw, strange. we were like, "That's that's you." That's like fucked. like like if he was wearing a bandana, you you wouldn't know it was me or him. That guy sucked. He was one of those guys <laughs> how like he was like the head honcho <clears throat> of a group of weenies. Oh, and so he thinks he's like he thinks he's hot shit, and you push back on him like even ten percent, and he's like. Oh! What you know what you know one of those <laughs> yeah. yeah I know the kind yeah. yeah it's pretty good it's pretty good but yeah um, I I sometimes think about that maybe every eight months and it fucks me up hmm. that'll do it Brian media what you got buddy uh, I put down a feature film that is called Duel this is a black comedy slash sci-fi film Ooh. about actually I know War. we were just talking about doppelgangers uh, it's about clones. So, in the last 12 months, there's been two kind of low, like, like relaxed sci-fi films that are about clones. There's one called Swan Song that stars mm-hmm. Mahershala Ali. And it's about him, his character finding out he's dying. And so he clones himself. And the idea is that he's going to switch himself out with the clone. And it explores kind of like the ethical kind of idea of that. Wasn't there a Ewan McGregor clone movie similar to that? The Island, the Island yeah, yeah. Back in the day, which is a Michael Bay film, and it's <laughs> it's absolutely a Michael Bay film. And so, like, I, I like, like to me, I and, and I know the new Jurassic Park movie just came out. I watched that the other day. It's fucking terrible. Like, I love clone stuff in sci-fi, and there's a lot mm. of interesting questions where it's like the clone is a human and they have human rights, but they're not. But 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 they're but they're a copy paste of a person. Maybe we should start getting out like. What's going to get us, like, cancelled in, like, 20 years? And for me, clones don't get human rights. You're just ahead of the curve. You're just going to stand there. Sorry, meat sack. <laughs> you're just... A, you're just... You're, Where's you're, your soul, buddy? You're a, a, a control V. That's all you are, bro. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you think the control... Uh, the soul is connected to... Wow. Oh, no, Neve, I just want to hate something. Oh, okay. I just have all <laughs> this anger, and I need to put it into someone. But someone who's, like far enough away from my life so it doesn't directly affect me in many way but I do get to have a lot of opinions about it you're acting like you don't have a clone this has gotten uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> so Duel stars Karen Gillan and it's a near future alternate reality and the way they do all of that is super interesting it's so much better than an episode of Black Mirror they shot so like this is an American film but it's shot in Finland, so it looks off. And a lot of those countries up in Scandinavia are kind of postmodern in their in their architecture and in terms of their like uh, like transport and all that. So it, it looks like a Western country, but it's not an American Western country. And that, that and so you're watching it right away. There's something off about it. And the way they do the UI on phones and computers is really interesting because the chat logs are like terminals mm. instead of like what we would have with like you know the chunky roundedness of the apps and things. So it's kind of like an alternate, yeah, yeah, future. Uh, and in this, uh, Karen Gillan, Gillan plays a woman who's not a very likable person and is in a difficult part of her life, and her life is falling apart. She gets diagnosed with a terminal illness. And one of the options is she could clone herself and then her clone can just continue on her life. And it's done really as like a black comedy and it's it's fucking hilarious. Like there, there there's one bit where they're like, okay, so we're going to do the cloning procedure. And they're like, okay, and they're like, okay, you can come back in an hour. She comes back and they're like, okay, here's your clone. Uh, we got the eye color wrong, so we're going to give you 5% off. <laughs> and then like... They I, bring- I'd be like, send it back. <laughs> So yeah, they bring on another Karen Gill, and like, and I got it, and like, it's a very simple VFX kind of movie, but like, it it, it all mm. works for it. But yeah, it just turns into this thing where like the other version of her is way more likable, and she, I, I guess because she's not dying of an illness, she looks a lot healthier, and because she's learning everything from scratch, she's like asking the right kind of questions, and so she's gonna like take over her life, and it's gonna be great. 
and then her terminal illness there's an update on that and then it turns into a situation where the only legal proceeding is the original and the copy have to have a duel and apparently this is how they settle these matters what they get to use weapons yeah yeah and so apparently that's so like the way it's done is that all the people in the person's life are spectators and they go out to a like outdoor sports stadium or I guess like like a local sports stadium and they all watch and on one side of the field is one of the is, is either the copy or the original vice versa and there's a table of weapons and they have you know like five minutes to kill each other so these clones Brian is this like a also has your memories yep that fucks me up because imagine you just wake up and you're the clone yeah and so like a good chunk of this movie is Karen Gillan and uh, Aaron Paul who was Jesse in Breaking Bad and he's fantastic in this movie He's, like, only in the movie for about, like, I don't know, like, maybe 15, 20 minutes of screen time. But he kind of shows up in the middle of the movie. And he is just, like, a coach that you hire who will teach you how to kill your clone. Oh. And, so it's, like, using your own, yeah. like, yourself against yourself kind of stuff? Yeah. And it, it, it's a very matter-of-fact way. And, like, all the advice he gives her is really, really good advice. Like, it's very well written and very clever in that, like... Like, he's giving advice, and you're kind of watching, you're like, you know what, that that actually is very helpful in that situation. And so, he, like, he takes her to a morgue to, like, because, cause, cause, like, for her, she's never seen anything awful, but she's going to have to do this awful thing about trying to fight her clone to the death. And so he takes her to a morgue, and she has to experience death and, like, see a cadaver and understand that the, the film is a black comedy. It's like a weird farce on the sci-fi trope of a clone. Sounds cool. But yeah, yeah it's, it's a really weird movie because I was like, I don't know if I'm supposed to be sad or happy, so I'm just going to laugh uncomfortably. And that's the kind of movie I like. Cool. I noticed in my media section, I don't know if I remember writing this, but uh, it says that I have experienced boner medicine for happy boys. <laughs> uh, part one. Oh. Okay. I did. It didn't. I think the thing went offline. Uh, this this is a video um, that's that we've been passing around to each other. I gave it to you to watch because you needed a bit of help. I'm not sure any of that rings a bell now, Brian. Look, John left his media empty, so I I filled it in with a funny gag. Yeah. And we're having a great time at Willie's tonight. And I, I just... don't need boner medicine. I wouldn't have sex. That's disgusting. I knew someone who had sex once. I haven't seen them since. Fuck that, seriously? Yeah, he's just, always, Jesus. just hanging out with his girlfriend the whole time. Yeah. No, no, thank you. <laughs> right, Neve? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just hang out with us anymore. You know, sometimes I'm at a party and they're like, would you like some absinthe? Absinthe? And I'm like, I'd like some abstinence. Whoa. Mm-hmm. I did actually think of a piece of media. I finished Vagabond after reading oh. it on and off for like a year. Wow. Um, Where are you with that? Uh, yeah, that is one of those pieces of media that is frustratingly as good as everyone says it is. What I would say is I think I was a little lazy reading it and I did not get the best scans. They seemed fine. They seemed good quality. But I was in Forbidden Planet today and they had some and I opened it up and I was like, oh, no. Oh, I made a mistake. Uh, oh, okay. No, you do not. You do not read that in anything other than the very best quality because even a little downgrade hides so much of what's fucking so beautiful about that thing. Um, It's an incredible manga. Like, it's just really heart-achingly good. It's got so much in it. It's about aspiration. It's about, like, the search for purpose. It's about what happens to you when you find that purpose and all the different characters and philosophies that kind of come and go in that. In a lot of ways, it's a lot of really isolated little samurai stories that just play out over the course of an arc, and they're just really beautifully done, and it is so heavily trenched in samurai cinema and, like, all that kind of stuff, but it it never, it never for a second feels like it's borrowing from anything else. It just feels like this really organic thing. One of my favorite ones is, um, there's these two little kids in a village, and there's one samurai in the village, and this is, like the one dude with a sword 
and he just looks like a kind of horrible ogre. He's kind of naked, but he has a sword and he has what he takes whatever he wants from everyone because he's the samurai and everyone else is just farmers. And these two kids are just like, we're going to fucking kill this guy. And it's here. awesome. Um, there are many stories that are as good as that, including one where the main character, Miyamoto, M- uh, Musashi, fights death itself by becoming a farmer. So he's, like, creating life? Yep. It's true? Yep. And it's exactly as compelling as the sword fights. Um, it's it's a masterpiece, you know? It, it sucks that it's not done and may never be complete. Um, I looked a little bit into why he stopped making it. and he, he, his, I, haven't, I haven't read too much about it or anything, but the, the, the takeaway quote was unbearable mental strain, which... Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, uh, that seems like a person who is constantly trying to better themselves and... It's taking this toll. Yeah, but um, it's a beautiful story. The fact that it's unfinished I don't, really matters dick, I think. I think it's just, it is what it is, and it mm-hmm. is beautiful. And um, it, it's just incredible. It has two main characters. Like, it legit has two main characters, and they're both exactly as interesting as each other. And the whole purpose of the manga felt like it was... Well, no, it was definitely leading to a fight between these two, two historical figures... And I don't know that that's ever going to happen. The closest you get is them playing in the snow. And them playing in the snow together was one of the best bits of the entire manga. Um, Really, really beautiful story. So, so glad I read it. Moving on to finally reading Monster now. Oh, that's great. Yeah, seems cool. Which which volume are you on? I'm on chapter 13. Okay. So I think very early stages still. Yeah, yeah, you are. Uh, The setup to Monster is bit of a it's it's tough but when there's a big time skip it really gets going okay yeah yeah like because the, the the initial setup is great and right now it's kind of it's kind of floating a little bit but like i'm expect i'm i'm expecting yeah. it to pick up they bring in a very very good detective i think his name is detective lung or is, he, is he the guy who like keeps typing yeah yeah he's like typing with his hands yeah he's fucking brilliant yeah but it's cool Neve, do you have any media? Uh, I watched, like, I didn't know if I wanted to talk about this or not, because you know when you watch a movie and you're like, this is both doing a lot of new stuff, but is also kind of painfully generic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I watched The Black Phone. It is oh, a... Yeah, I've read about this, one. this Yeah, It's a horror movie with Ethan Hawke yeah. in it, and it is very, like, it's a, I wouldn't call it a period piece, it's a nostalgia period piece, I guess, where it's like... Um, American suburbs in the 80s, maybe 70s, and little boys start going missing from the local area. And there's a little boy called Finney and his uh, sister, I think it's Gwen, and they're watching a lot of their friends be taken, and they have a really cute relationship with each other where they kind of they stick up for each other in a kind of a shitty home situation. Um, Finney gets taken by a man in a mask and it's you know it's pretty generic stranger danger stuff um ethan hawk plays the bad guy in the mask but the thing that's interesting is when finney wakes up in this guy's basement and it's just blank walls there is a black phone and it's disconnected the first thing you see is that the wire's been cut on it and ethan hawk's character called the grabber because he grabs Little kid. That's such a good name, <laughs> the, the Grabber. The Grabber. Oh, okay, Brian, mm-hmm. let's take turns doing impressions of the Grabber. Can I go first? Okay. Oh, I'm the Grabber. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you, Neve. You can aim it at Neve. Are you ready to be grabbed by the Grabber? I I actually love both of your takes so much better than Ethan Hawke's take. Oh no! I think I think Ethan Uh, Hawke played it gay, and I think that's a bit fucked. He made it gay. He played the character kind of gay. He really went for a really like effeminate voice with this character, and like he's either like amazing in films or just not there at all. He was, like, in this, but I felt like his choices with this, I was just like, oh, are we doing, like, you know, gender ambiguous, stranger danger, like, uh, okay. Like, it was just a bit, like, never seen this take before, and I was kind of, like, rolling my eyes a little. Like, I felt like it could have been anyone other than Ethan Hawke, and I usually love Ethan Hawke and stuff. I think he, when he wants to bring it, he does bring it kind of thing. 
um, except in Moon Knight, which was boring. But that's another conversation that I won't have here. <laughs> no, it's here or ever. <laughs> or ever yeah. I, I actually blocked out that show because I just had nothing to. Wow, I like. Mm. I know people who are like, just watch the ending of Moon Knight. Still crying. <laughs> Wait till they watch literally anything else. Their lives will be so enriched. That show is like the opposite of like media. Yeah, it's nothing. Sure, it's a little more than Obi Wan, but um, yeah, a little, but little, that's, yeah, that's... barely. Yeah. But yeah, there is a phone in the room, and Ethan Hawke's character is just like. Sometimes it rings, but no one ever answers. So the grabber can hear it ringing, and so can Finny. And Finney picks up the phone and he gets help through the phone to escape the room. And that's the thing that makes this movie interesting. Because that's like a little kind of like supernatural premise that you kind of don't get like in that like kind of Stranger Danger kind of stuff. It's a very kinda, good hook. Yeah, it's a good hook. There's this like unhooked phone that rings that helps, helps the boy out. The stuff that makes it really generic is like just the whole like playing this kind of uh child stealer kind of like like queerly i thought was a bit eye rolly also you never ne- learn anything about the grabber he has this cool iconic looking mask on the front of the poster and it changes out fa- mouth plates so he has no smile he's a big smile he's a frowny face he's angry eyes or happy eyes and the grabber changes out the different face plates to kind of i guess communicate like how he's feeling but that is all you get like that is all you get about the grabber. I was just I was kind of waiting not for his justification, but like just for a little bit more to do with this character. Like Right. Yeah, flesh him out a bit. Like a bit. Like um Sometimes I feel like with horror, people love to champion kind of not low budget, but like not that well known horror because uh, I've heard people talk about this movie as well. Mm. Is there is there something to it? Like, is there? I think honestly, the thing that's to it is Finney and his um, sister Gwen's relationship. Like, they're a really good team, and that brings the other sci fi element into it. Is where Gwen gets visions, and she tries to use her visions to help find Finney. And also, this is like incompetent cops, like that, like horror trope where the cops just can't do anything. So they're literally going to a twelve year old, being like, "Please use your visions." Because uh, they suck so hard, and she's like, "I like I, that's not how my visions work." So it kind of has a bit of a like a Stranger Things esque vibe. Um, I don't want to like equate all like nostalgia eighties media to Stranger Things, but there is a lot of kids on bikes, kids at arcades, right. like intercut with a kid stuck in a room. And I thought that was kind of the uh, also, also the, the fact the that they Ethan Hawke in it because like he was a child actor in the eighties and. Mm. Uh, he, yeah, he's he's in a bunch of those throwback films. Can I give my Stranger Things hot take? Go on. Uh, Stranger Things and Riverdale are doing near identical plots this season, and Riverdale is doing it way better. Holy shit! Um, is this like an escape room horror movie? Yeah, but this is this is the other thing. Would I never found it horrific? Like it wasn't that scary, and like I don't I'm I don't think horror movies need to be scary. Uh, but this wasn't really bringing anything other than the grabber's mask, I guess. So I, I guess and a few jump that, scares. That was sort of a question I had. Like, what's the grabber do? Like, is he murdering people? He's yeah, he's murdering the kids. Okay. Like he he's playing a game with the kid where he like locks the door, but then the next time he goes upstairs, maybe he'll leave the door unlocked, and he's waiting for the kid to take the opportunity to run away to punish them because he told them to promise him to stay in the room. And how would he pu- how would he punish them? Then? He sits upstairs, and it's Ethan Hawke, and he looks beefy in this movie, like super wide beefy, and it's like him sitting like <laughs> like on a chair, legs spread. I'm doing it, and like has she, a, she looks fantastic. Yeah, yeah, and like yeah. like this, and he has a belt like in his hand and he's waiting for the kid to come around the corner and just I guess smack the shit out of the kid um, oh that's really scary and it's really scary but like like that's that's the that's the threat but the threat escalates eventually like the other kids he's grabbed they're not in the room so you can assume yeah you know what happened but um, it was like, I guess I was kind of intrigued by the phone concept and the supernatural concept, but it was kind of just attached to kind of a, like a kind of more generic horror, I guess. 
that I, I was just like, if this, if this went another way, it could have been more interesting. And if it went another way, it could have been more boring. And just kind of by the nature of it, balancing these two things, it kind of like, I gave it a three, you know? Yeah. And it was just like, I wish it had a little more spice to it. Or I wish it sucked a little more so I would just not bother yeah, with it at sure, all. Sure, sure, yeah. It's kind of just safely fine. So in some ways, three is like my least favorite yeah. number to land on. Mm-hmm. Brian. Yes. We both watched the first episode of a series. And I'm still... I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah, it's Nathan Fielder's new show called The Rehearsal. And it's on HBO. People aren't familiar with Nathan Fielder. He was the host of Nathan For You, uh, a show that I think got progressively more broken as it kept going. Yeah, but, and... but it's like the best show of the 2010s. Oh, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, that evolution of brokenness, the rehearsal doesn't pick up where this left off. He's been getting more broken. We just haven't seen it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, like, the last episode of Nathan For You is Finding Francis, and that's, like, a two-hour special. Uh, that, uh, that like, upset me. Yeah, and I think what's happened with the way he makes shows is they film a lot of stuff, and then it's in the edit that they cultivate the narrative. The first episode of the rehearsal is just a bunch of scenarios, and they have, and, like, it's all in the edit, how they have constructed the story. But it is basically... Imagine a uh, dialogue video game. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, a, a, a text adventure video game that has dialogue options. You know the way sometimes you apply that to real life scenarios or let's say you have a conversation that goes badly and you wish you could just like go back one or two paragraphs and try again. Mm -hmm. The rehearsal is that for an individual that needs to break a difficult piece of news or or a, a piece of information that they want to articulate as well as they can. And so they try it in as many scenarios can, can as possible. I, can, I, can I break down like the very first scene? And I won't say any more than that. Okay. So the first scene is Nathan arriving at a man's house. And this man, I'm, I, I don't want to give too, away too many specifics. Uh, and they kind of like, they small talk. Nathan walks around his apartment. He makes like the odd joke and... He's like, um, he sees a book and he makes a joke about the book and they kind of sing down. Turns out this man has something he wants to confess to someone and um, Nathan's going to help him. Then Nathan reveals to the man that their entire interaction so far is something that Nathan has rehearsed dozens of times. Weeks earlier, he had sent two like gas repair men to check on the guy's boiler but they weren't actually checking his boiler one went into the boiler the other 3d scanned his entire apartment so nathan could rebuild it in an empty lot and learn every single bit of it and in from like the chairs the guy has to the books on his wall so he could like micromanage the conversation to the nth degree how does knowing the room well, micromanage this? He also hires an actor to get to know this guy. And then the actor plays the part of this man. And so Nathan g runs through every possible scenario with the actor. And the actor's really good. It's really like, good. All the actors, all, they... Yeah. <sighs> this is kind of fucked. It's, oh, yeah. Like, Neve, <laughs> I, I'm not... Like, I, I finished it and I was like, this is like... I think kind of ethically compromised because Nathan's whole plan is to construct this scenario where this man is going to have to confess something and make him rehearse every bit of it dozens of times. Like, like, like there's a bit where he has the uh, tool twine, you know, for actually writing multiple choice adventure games. Uh -huh. He has that out on a MacBook. And his final twine map is gigantic. But okay, he's dealing with a human here. Like, like they're not going to stick to like he can uh, presume all the things oh, this yeah. guy will do so like but like and, and like and like that's where the entertainment comes because yeah. like, nathan is so robotic in his disposition anyway and like there are human expressions in this not from nathan obviously but mm. from like 
like I, I guess the client and yeah. some 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 of the supporting people I'm like and like th- this is a documentary it's real people but some of the expressions on their face are just so like emotional and readable and it just connects to you so is it a thing where kind of Nathan can keep them on book by just giving them very little emotionally it, it's more like he just accounts for every permutation. Mm. So when he's simulating this scenario, he simulates everything from the woman being totally fine with it to her absolutely losing her mind. So like to like the worst ending yeah. ever. He turns this man's life into a multiple choice <laughs> visual novel. And I guess sometimes if, if there's a situation where you are worried and you end up like getting anxious and you are catastrophizing, he like there, there, there is examples of that catastrophe situation. And like, it seems like with him, once it happens, it's kind of like, oh, so that's what that would feel like. Yeah, so he's just like, I've run the numbers, there's like a 1 in 30 chance you're going to piss your pants here. Like M- More, he's just developed a backup plan for every scenario. So here's what you do if the waiter comes over at this time. Here's what happens if, like, they, if, if like, you get a question wrong, and it's just bizarre. Yeah. That's insane. That, like... I'm going to think about this piece of television forever. Yeah, it's one of the, I it's don't, strangest... I don't know if it should exist. <laughs> no. Like, But like, it, it makes sense that this is what Nathan Fielder would make because he's not a normal man. No. He, here's my other question. Okay, with Nathan for you and the success of it, um, and that was like, you know, the kind of Borat situation where Sasha Barcone can't really do these things anymore because too many people know who he is. Yeah. Like, like, does that happen, Nathan? Do people know kind of that they're getting into a weird situation? Like, how does he find this these guy had never heard of Nathan? Oh, OK. You. Yeah. Okay. And I also think like Nathan for you is big. It's not but, it's I don't think it's Borat. Yeah. No, no. Like, this is definitely still called status. But like, as it goes on, the client kind of realizes that Nathan Fielder is a fucking like nut job. Like, like a psychopath? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's and Nathan's like, no I'm not, but that's the joke. <laughs> then there's a I won't say what it is, but Brian, there's a bit at the end where actors get switched out again. <laughs> that fucked me up. That was the best part. That was the best part. How long are the episodes? Forty four minutes. Holy shit. And it is like being it is like being sucked down some kind of awful Oh hole. yeah, no, like uh, as soon as as soon as we started watching it I couldn't turn away. Yeah. How long has he been making this for? This seems intense. Uh, like, like he has HBO money and it shows. Okay. Oh my god, this has a budget and it's fucked up. Like, like it, it's it, it feels like the making of Shenmue or something where all this money is being spent on things that don't matter. Okay. Me and Michelle watched it and afterwards Michelle was like, do you remember that time you tricked Brian and Neve into thinking they won the boss cast thing? And I was like, yeah. And she just goes, this felt kind of like that. And that really bothered me. Oh yeah, like as soon as I watched this, like uh, I turned to Rebecca and Rebecca was like, "Yeah, John, I love this shit." Because <laughs> it's just cool. Can't it's, wait. It's, it's, it's very good. Like it, it's very relatable, and also just kind of like the stuff you don't like in it, kind of reflected on me in some way. And I was yeah, like, I think I think parts of this made me uncomfortable. It kind of there's some parts of myself it made me look at. And I didn't... That was not comfortable. Yeah. But yeah, he's very good at playing this character. And I know he leans into this character. And I don't know what Nathan Fielder is actually like off camera. But I think he might be like this. I really want to deep dive into it someday and just see if there's anything. Because sometimes he breaks character, but it's very rare. The only time I saw it was when that um, shop clerk said oh, he drinks yeah. his grandson's pee and Why like, he n- so yeah, up? and he just smiles a smile that you just don't see him smile for the entire thing because yeah. he's like, you drink his pee? Because <laughs> he was just like, wow, I, I couldn't have like tricked him into doing anything more hilarious than telling me this story. <laughs> that guy's fucking brilliant. But yeah, it, this really feels like, yeah, like the last season of Nathan Fielder is very strange or, or Nathan for you is very strange and then this is just an alternate reality I think the scary thing about this is it makes that last season feel like a tutorial mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. compelling television oh yeah oh yeah strategy talk video game time video game time 
Oh my Brian, God. what's your favorite video game? Uh, Off the top of your head, go. Uh, FIFA, FIFA 12. Need go. <laughs> um, um, Gex. Gex. Gex, pretty good. I'm going to go for uh, Blinks the Time Sweeper. Fuck. Yeah. Best fucking mascot Microsoft ever had. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, they should have put him into PlayStation All Stars DLC. They should have. Um, I just think it's really clever. A time traveling cat. There's never ever been a time traveling cat. I can't think of a single anime that has a time traveling cat. Fucking brilliant. Yep. Great stuff altogether. Brian. Yes. You played. I'll, I'll pick the first one. Is that okay? That is okay. I, 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 I've got an order. You go for it, buddy. <laughs> Brian. Yes. You've played. Yes. Mystic <laughs> Bell Enchanted Edition. Mystic Bell is a game I played on the Nintendo Switch. This is a search action game. Oh, Corner Scratcher. Similar That's to what that old calls them. Metroid or Castlevania series. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you call them? That. Um, you see, you have to search and you do actions. I don't fucking know what you call them. <laughs> My, my corner, See, corner, what I love about Corner Scratcher is, it is you have to go it to. It doesn't require an explanation. Yeah, you just have to go to every corner. Every corner, scratch yeah. it until they beat the final boss. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's gonna, this game has a pretty good critical path. <laughs> okay, this is a very small version of a game like Metroid or Castlevania. This game takes like two or three hours to beat, and I played it in one sitting, and it was a great time. I played it on the Switch. Uh, it's a pixel game where you play as a young witch named Belle. It's a special night in her witch's academy where they're going to do a big spell and they she is knocked over the bowl and she needs to find the ingredients again. And she has to go all over the academy, which is also a castle. You know, kind of like Hogwarts, but way better. It's half, I guess, progression through abilities and half true uh, items and building up and combining items and then trading items so it's kind of like a point and click adventure in that aspect and that is tricky because you need a walkthrough because you don't know that A plus B equals C with those things and that's a very old school approach to games because you, usually with those you had a lot of time on your hand and you would try a bunch of different item combinations to get what you were looking for but this game looks amazing and sounds amazing. The pixel art is so fucking cute. I've never seen this really done in one of these games, but the game is super, or like the the the, the uh, camera is super zoomed in. So I guess graphically, it kind of looks like a Mario platformer on a Game Boy, where there isn't a lot of real estate around you. But playing this on handheld on the Switch really felt like I was playing an older game than I thought I was. Yeah. It's super cute. I'm it, seeing it a, is gorgeous. a rat king. Oh, yeah. L- later on, you get an ability where you turn into a mouse and you get to go around the sewers. I love that shit. Yeah. I love I am tinier and now I can get into a tiny environment. For sure. The map isn't that big. It's more horizontal than it would be vertical. And I think there's only like four or five warp spots in the entire thing. And one or two sections wrap around, which is kind of clever. Uh, it's a very well thought out and considered map. It was more or less made by one person. And as I sat through the credits, there was a lot of play testers, which I appreciated because I thought for the most part, it was definitely play tested well in terms of the mechanics and abilities. Not so much maybe the item combination, but there's enough clues there that when you like, there, there, there was one character who was like, oh, I don't look pretty tonight, and she's like a weird goblin woman. But earlier on in the game, you find the bit of a broken mop, and the mop is broken in half, I think. Or maybe you use it for something, but the mop breaks in half. So then you give her a mop head, and she wears it as a wig, and she changes yeah. her sprite. And it's like, yeah, that, that makes sense. Is there any penalty for trying things out? No, you just you just try whatever mm. you want. It's just a case of, I guess, like it's costing you time. Yeah, okay. And you're like, oh, I have to go to this character, but they're all the way on this side of the map, and I don't know if this is going to work or not. Let me just check online. And like, that stuff kind of feels like a side quest, but it is mandatory to the game because you need to do all of that stuff. But usually in my mind, something like that, like, you know, the item trading side quest is, is a side quest. But the item trading in this is important because you are gathering ingredients for this magic spell. And you also need to collect pages for a book. And if you collect the pages for the book, you get the true ending. But what I did was I 
made sure not to get all the pages and I got the bad ending and then I got the true ending because I wanted to do both. See. And you know how the Switch doesn't do achievements mm -hmm. or trophies? I've noticed this in some games. They have built-in achievements into the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you, you go into the start menu of the game and down at the bottom maybe under options they just have like the checklist. And I do appreciate that because like I, I love achievements. I love trophies. Yeah. I think they're a lot of fun. Do you like them, maybe? Yeah, it's a good way to get more out of a game. Yeah. Especially if you really like it. So you're yeah. just like, I can I can do these. Absolutely. And it's just so strange that Nintendo never took it on. Because I think it would just work on so many games. But I guess they have their own internal thing if a game wants to have it. Mm -hmm. Like, does Steam have it? I think Steam has it. Steam, I think, has Steam achievements or something. Yeah. So, I, 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 I like, this is absolutely a Steam game that's come out on Switch. Like, this is the enhanced edition. I'm sure... The original version of this is on Steam. Sure. Um, so, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with games that come out on Steam and then a year or two later they come out on Switch. But I guess with the Steam Deck now, that's going to be a different scene. But yeah, th 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 this game was a lot of fun. Cool. Sounds cool. Especially because I played a bunch of indie games recently that didn't grab me. Yeah, I was thinking that recently. Yeah, so there's this game and another game and oh my god, the next game is the next game PS5 Storage Expansion Woes from Neve. Neve, yes. I want to hear this about is a new this. release, is it? Uh, mm, okay. This made me so mad. I was mad as hell. I was steaming. Okay. Uh, so I bought a SSD uh, like storage for my PS5. They went on sale and that is the way to buy them because they cost a lot of stupid money. Uh, like like not on sale uh, one terabyte can cost around 200 euro oh, on sale you can get them for around half price and i got a western digital with uh, the heatsink and i was all ready to install this so got my big stupid heavy ps5 turned it over you take off the take off the cover and it's thankfully the storage um the expansion slot is just right under the cover you take off you don't have to go any deeper into the console you unscrew a screw it tells you to use a size one phillips uh just a standard screw head and you take out your screw fine and dandy you get to another screw, screw that holds a spacer and when you put in your storage it rests on a spacer so you have to take a screw out and move the spacer to the size of your card yeah the screw that holds in the spacer was the cheapest, crappiest screw that once I put my screwdriver into it, it just tore the entire screw oh, head. Oh no. There wasn't oh. a bit of friction whatsoever. And like, it's really frustrating because I was searching this and like there's Reddit treads on it, there's Resetera treads. This is a common thing, but you'll always get someone be like, did you use a drill? And it's just like, no, I have a really nice toolkit and I open electronics regularly. I know what I'm doing. I know what was going wrong. It's just a cheap screw that is in there super tight and it looked nearly stripped like as it was in there, like it was. Yeah, like it, it's, a, it's always the case that they tighten it too much mm. and they tighten it beyond the point of stress. So that way any, yeah, tweaking to it. It just, it it just rips it yeah. straight away. So there was no way to get this screw out with a screwdriver. So right. I had to get a, a needle nose pliers and remove the screw that way. But the screw is just like destroyed. So I'm not gonna use that. So I have to buy a replacement screw on Amazon, you can't just buy a single screw. And it's just like, oh, go to electronic shops. Dublin just doesn't have shops anymore. I'm sorry. It's very hard to get what you need anywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, so it's just really frustrating because you like, you buy a very expensive console, you buy their very expensive solution to storage expansion, and you go to install it and they have used a cheap component that makes it a nightmare and a really stressful experience because like i've like you know semi experience with like doing these kind of things like i opened up my controller and i can fix the spring um there's people who don't have any experience like doing this kind of stuff at all and they're expected to do this and this is a problem with this console this screw is shitty and it seems to be just like a look of the draw thing you might get a console where the screw isn't made of butter or you might get one where it's fine because there's just some people who are like mine come out fine and i watched the whole pile of youtube videos screws come out fine mine was just just crap that's my least favorite part of any process like this 
when you watch other people's videos and they're just the problem you're having doesn't exist yeah oh and i was just like maybe like i was like did i just like fuck this up and then i googled it and like thankfully there was a lot of threads with a lot of people suffering the same faith as me and like obviously felt bad but it was also like okay i'm glad it wasn't just a me thing this is an everybody thing well not an everybody this is a lot of people problem but just that and the launch day controller the spring just snapping in it they fixed this in the newer controllers thankfully the springs are stronger and having to replace that it's just really frustrating to put so much money into a machine machine and just kind of not get that back and we have like the first wave production yeah. line one so it's only now the flaws are coming out or yep. things you know like way past the launch tech reviews like for me my dual sense that came with my ps5 the touchpad sticks mm. in one of the corners mm. so if i press down in it i could feel it popping back up but i feel like it like this weird hitch sure and it's not nice no especially for like a 70 euro controller yeah um, that still kills me about those things yeah. 70 euro i changed the ssd on my ps4 years ago and that was super simple mm. so this is really frustrating that this is something they've already like considered and they've made it more difficult yeah like it should be super simple and it would have been uh mm -hmm. without this but it's not again like not a console wars person but it's sh like xbox have just a really nice simple like solution there is a slot in the back of the console you buy their their branded uh segate like expansion stuff and you just click it into the back and there you go it's done you don't have to lift the top off you don't have to remove screws it's just very very user friendly mm. and this is just a level of like non-consumer friendly shit that you have to do with the ps5 that i really hope when they like reiterate on this and make a slim or do something that this is something they just take out of it straight away because the idea that like you might get cheaper ex like storage because it's like you know third party and you can buy your own heat sinks and you can buy like that it's all ends up the same price these are expensive things like oh, yeah. you're not saving money you're just making it a more frustrating experience to be honest so yeah i was i was really pissed about that because i was just like i'll have a nice evening of a little tech and i was in the room just fucking pissed <laughs> I, I hate when that happens where like steamed like like you have prepared for this and you have like a mental timeline of how this is going to go mm -hmm. and it doesn't yep. and then you realize it's too late in the day and it's going to have to continue into tomorrow and you go to bed mad yeah i had Yo. to before i went to bed mad i had to put my ps5 back and like i live in a small house i have to put it behind stairs i have to pull a lot of shit out mm -hmm. to get that in and out because it's just a big monster of a console i kind of thought it was cute that it was ugly before i hate it i hate the ps5 oh, it's like oh, such an ugly the, gross the, machine there was a point where like i was looking at it like in the pictures and stuff and i was like you know what Kind of looks like an alien spaceship. This is cool. From the moment I took it out physically, I was like, oh, this is hideous. This is so awful. It's yeah, just I an oppressive, big, for the revised version. gross thing. I'm ditching that fucking thing as soon Get as it's Get that small. pop collar out of here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get out of here, Chad. Can I tell you guys about a, a tech success story I had? Because yes. I don't have a lot of these because I'm, no, I'm bad at things. Okay, a win. Tell us a win. Um, The other night, I was like, okay, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to set myself up with a Dreamcast emulator at my PC, at my television, and an hour and a half later, had the emulator running with every Dreamcast game downloaded, and I'm such a happy little fucker. And it worked. Hell it yeah. works. That's great. It happened correctly. Yep. yep. I just That never happens to me. Ever, ever, ever. I'm happy for you. Thank you. I'm unhappy for you, Dave. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Okay. I will fix this. Oh yeah, no, it'll get solved. It's just mm -hmm. the fact that there's all these like extra steps that are completely unnecessary. It's just the big craw on this console generation. It's like, like it's just it's storage. It's expensive and games are big. Yeah, they are because it's like what just under one terabyte in the mm. PS5, but it's not even like it's like some weird funny eight hundred number. Yeah, it's, is the is the total amount of storage? Because the thing where it's advertised as one thing and then it's actually another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can, well, they have all, all their systems, system updates. Yeah, yeah. and all the so. fucking games are hundred gigs. I know, and I won't delete Red Dead. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, that'll do it. And Genshin Impact keeps getting bigger. It does. <laughs> that shit ain't getting smaller. Um, real quick little update. Um, beat Cuphead's 
DLC, and then I beat the secret boss in the DLC, but then something really cool happens. Um, you unlock this thing called the Cursed Charm, and the Cursed Charm gives you one health and randomizes your weapon every time you hit fire. So you hit fire and you might have spread shot, and then you hit fire again and it might turn into the homing weapon. There's about eight different weapons in Jug in, in Jughead, in Cuphead. Then with the cursed item, you have to beat any seven bosses from the game and it turns into something else that I don't know. I've been having a ton of fun with that, like going back to the earlier bosses and trying to beat them where you can only take one hit and your items, your weapons are randomized each time. It like, it really forces you to think about those bosses in like just a totally different way because shit that you could be like, okay, look, I'm so good at dodging these other attacks. I can just eat this attack and it's fine. You can't do that anymore. And it's really, really fun. And um, that delicious last course, let me tell you, that that, that, that is a good DLC. It, it was a satisfactory meal. It was a satisfactory meal. Yum yum, John's in John's Tom. Yum yum in John. Brian, tell us about Fire Emblem Grapple Dog. Okay, f- Grapple gra- Grapple Emblem. Go. Grapple Dog is a platformer game that I am taking my time with because I am loving it. Oh my god, this game is so fucking good. It's uh, another indie game that I'm playing on the Switch. And I am delighted with this purchase. I am ecstatic. It was it twiz twiz a good time. Twas twer. Uh, this is Bionic Commando with a cute little dog. This he, is like this looks like a Brian game. Yeah, yeah. it sure does. Uh, I guess the pixel art is kind of like part time UFO. It does that thing yeah. where it like scales diagonally, but it still has to like chunk to the grid. Brian, sorry, can I toss a little tangent in? Yeah. Did, is there another part-time UFO game that's competitive coming out? Yeah, it was a saucer gacha game that just came out. And it looks good, but apparently it makes a, makes a really, really annoying noise every time you win. Well, that's not good. Uh, and you're constantly winning in that game because, you, you know, it's the ground. Well, well I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've seen some footage of it. I, I need to think on it. Okay. Grapple Dog. But Grapple Dog. But Grapple Dog. This is one I've been thinking on, and uh, my thoughts are all positive. This is great. There we have it. Game of the year. Elden Ring versus Grapple Dog. I just think it's really good. You play as a cool dog and it sets itself up in a really interesting way where you have the protagonist and you have the antagonist. And the way they do it is you, as the dog, work with an archaeology team. You get separated and you are in these ancient rooms and you get the grapple hook and you go through the tutorial with a floating head called Null. And so he teaches you along the way, but like obviously through the dialogue, he's like suggesting maybe if you do this, you could get across that gap. And then as you do the tutorial, at the end, he betrays you because you pick up a diamond or something and then he gets his whole body back and he's actually going to be the baddie of the story. And it was such an organic way of setting up the good guy, bad guy dynamic and they immediately have beef with each other. Yeah. Even though they've just met. And Sounds also, like a very cute version of like Shodan from System Shock. Yeah. And like also that's the tutorial phase done and dusted. Like it, it, it ticked everything it needed to do in the setup. And it was just like, yeah, it was very, very clever. And then it brings you into a world map menu, looks more familiar, and you are just unlocking uh, levels as they go on. And the more collectibles you get in a level, the more you can progress further down the line. I guess it's like the Mario 3D land game like that you know the way in the latter half of that game you couldn't unlock later levels until you 100 percent completed other levels and so it's kind of feeding you that way and I, I i i really like that kind of setup the dialogue is fantastic it has enough kind of like wink nod we're in a video game but also enough charm that it's not quippy and annoying there was a great bit where like the archaeologist is like a very old turkey and the dog is talking to her and she she's kind of talking about like the impact of what the curse is going to happen and they have to save the world and he's like i don't want to hear about the lore and she's like it was just two sentences <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and that and that and that that's got cute me. yeah that's good. i was that's like good. you know what there, there's such an easy way for that joke that, that kind of humor to come across as tired but that's actually i, I was like that's really <laughs> i was like yeah no you, you got me. <laughs> um, the music is fucking amazing. I would describe it as like the music from Sonic Tree, where you know Knuckles' theme in Sonic Tree, where it has like this kind of like 
scratch mix beat to it. Like has this kind of fall down rhythm. <clears throat> yeah. So like all the tracks are like that. The one thing is they do one track per world. So you will hear the same oh, okay. song for all six of that level, but then not for the boss battle. But the, the, the track is long enough and varied enough that I'm, I'm like, it's a good track, so you're fine listening to on loop. And it does that thing where like, it has a tiny voice sample, but it'll just be like, And you're like, what? <laughs> but it works. And uh, so, but yeah, Sonic Three had a load of them. Yeah, well, not load, but it had like someone going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know the way when Knuckles comes in and you're, boop, 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 boop. come on. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's just cool. that kind of yeah, like it's that kind of music. When it first came out on Switch, there was a bit of UI stuff where it told you to press a certain button, and when you pressed that button, it didn't work. I tweeted at the guy who made this game, because it's more or less made by one dude. His name's Joe. So I tweeted at Joe, Joe, I'm pressing this button, it's not working. And he went, hey, hey Brian, I'll fix it soon, I'm doing a patch. He patched it the other day. Just for me. Fucking shoutouts to Joe. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I just very, very personally connected with this game. And I'm not even a dog person, but you know what? Sometimes I am. I don't think I'm... I haven't heard of it. You're not a it. dog person? No, I grew up with cats. But then there's so many special dogs I Yeah, know. you're so nice to Dash. Well, you, you always tell uh, Tiggy. Well, Tiggy's lovely. Well, was lovely. She's, She's just she was a real friend. trooper. Uh, whenever you or Rebecca post the picture of Dash on social media, I, I salivate. I'm just like, there he is. Can I compliment... I, I feel like you guys have the perfect like posting rhythm with Dash. Oh, we don't like oversaturate. I'm oh, always yeah. like, I, I'm never too familiar with Dash. Mm -hmm. It's always like, oh, you know. It's a treat when you see him. Yeah, because there's other dogs I know, and sometimes it's like, it's not that fucking cute a dog. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. but, but Dash, very good. I like to respect his privacy. He doesn't like a phone in his face too much. Yeah. Okay. The dog in this is called Pablo. I forgot the dog's That's name. That's cute. Yeah, his name is Pablo, and the guy who made this game is Joe Gribben. Now, obviously, he's going to be like, well, loads of people made this game, but I spoke to him, so I'm going to say Joe made it. Obviously, loads of people made this game, but thank you, Joe. Appreciate your help. It's very rarely that you have to moan about a game and then moan about it to the developer, and then the developer gets back to you and patches in a fix for you. I always wonder about that with game developers. If, like, fans are like, hey, there's something wrong with your game, like a bug or something... Is that irritating or are they grateful because this is just some QA that's just come down? You could tell with this guy having this game on the Switch was a big deal to him because like there is a lot of love in it. Like like he has the run so like the character Pablo has the run from Mario Tree, but then he has Sonic's jump where he kind of rolls into a ball. Like like there are aspects of this game that are very much from like 90s platformers and you could tell for him that this is a big deal to have this on the Switch. So he wants to, this to be the best experience possible, and I and also I do too. So I like to me it was constructive feedback, hmm. but I also I was having a moan. Yeah, you yeah know? but like like to me it looked like I was having a whinge. I don't know, but yeah, he was super nice about it. Yeah, someone from the video messaged me saying I spelled their name wrong, and it, it's really haunting me. That's a pity. Yeah, dyslexia. I know, and I hate I hate it because, like, I hate using it as an excuse, but it is why I get so many spellings wrong. I spell my own name wrong. Yeah. Do you get, like, physically confused, Neve, like, with spaces and stuff? Yeah, left and right, I've given someone really bad directions. Oh, like, yeah, no, I know, so, I, I, I like, terrible directions. That'll happen to me as well, but, like, it's like my entire compass is just so fucked. Mm, I think I was bad at directions, but then I... Harnessed my power of background drawing and went. You should pick key, oh, key elements in the world See, and focus yeah, and have, on those. Have, have yeah. Your focal what points. happens to me is like, I will know which direction to go, and in the instance between opening the door and like exiting the building, the direction will flip. I will come out of this building and go the wrong way. Well, there is, there, is, there is a thing called dyspraxia, yeah, which is kind of like spatial. yeah, spatial awareness and like you're clumsy on purpose. I think, like, I, I don't know. Maybe I have something like that because but it's very, lately, it, it is related happened, to dyslexia. Things have happened that have made me, like, really had to consider what is actually going on. And I, I read up a bunch about, like, 
like what are like the other like non written writing effects of dyslexia and apparently I have like a bunch of them but um yeah it's weird I don't know how we got here can you tell uh analog time give me a second and I can mm. but like there's something I always have to work backwards yeah for me I always get mixed up around like three o'clock five o'clock as, as soon as I get to six uh, six o'clock I know that's 18 but like the afternoon I don't know I can't understand directions. <laughs> like, I just don't, I don't under, someone will be like, well, you go to the top of the road and immediately I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. When people say top or bottom of something, I'm like, well, I'm standing here. So if I keep going forward, that's the top. But to you, that might be the bottom because you know that road and you live on the top. I hate Yeah. That. And immediately direction. I am trying to figure out that out and they're, they're giving me the rest of Excuse me, they're giving me the rest of the directions and I'm not even listening because I can't compute. It, it's always helpful to say something like like Grafton Street, for example. That has two very identifiable mm-hmm. ends where it has the Stevens Green end and the Trinity end. Sure. But if they said, why don't they just yeah. say the Trinity yeah. end? Yeah, because if they say, say if someone says top, you're like, to me, I'm like, that's the one with the green. But then maybe for someone else it isn't. Yeah. But like, it depends on like what is their priority. My, my, like my brain will short circuit and someone street. will say the top of, the top of Grafton Street and I'll just immediately spiral into this, like, I don't know what you mean. And okay. I can't, I won't even guess one or the other. I'll just, yeah. Okay, so for me, like, what's the top of O'Connell Street? Oh, the yeah. Lewis send? Like, like, is, is that the end where Parnell towards Street? The Heine- yeah, towards the, the Heineken or, building. Or, or, yeah, or, or is it down yeah. by the bridge? You see, I would call the Heineken one the top because we used to work around there. And see, I would call it, like, bottom. yeah, a Gardens of Remembrance area and the gate, like, the bottom but even though there's a hill kind of there, so right? maybe you would go that way. I don't know. It's 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 completely subjective. And that's Grapple Dog. That's Grapple Dog. <laughs> game of the year. It's just a really good game, and it just makes you question everything. <laughs> um, Neve. Yes. Tell us about Outriders World Slayer. That's oh, a good name for an expansion. Yeah. So this is the expansion for Outriders. I was happy to go to Out- back to Outriders and see my character because um, she is a cool butchy woman. And I've said it a million times, you can never get to, you can never really make a butchy woman in video games. So I really appreciate that in Outriders you can. It also only skews that way. You cannot make anyone, uh, uh, like anyone who isn't butchy. But for me, that's a treat. I met a character called Gideon um, based on Gideon Nav from the Lock Tomb trilogy and it makes me so happy to see her uh, there so I was happy to return to that character also I love how this game feels it is the most brutal shooter there is people like enemies just explode in like sprays of red guts everywhere and like they're all slowed down and you do like your cool skill and you can see their like skeleton splash outward from their whole body but it's like a whole wave of enemies it's just such a meaty messy shooter and I really miss the gunplay so I was super happy to go back and just get back into the shooting saw someone recently say the kinesthetics of this game are good and I was like, it's kind of up its own ass. But then I was like, it's a kind of handy word, though. Mm-hmm. Is that is that what I'm talking about? I guess so. It's like the kind of, the feel, yeah. you know? Yeah, like to me, it's like... It, it, the, it's it, the it, hit stuns from Tekken. The yeah. hit sparks. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's got that domino effect where everything connects in and it feels satisfying. Yeah. It just, just has a meaty, splatty, wet feedback to it that I just I love and like there is such good fun sound design I like I'm, my character that I'm playing as one of the skills is just like a slow down orb so like if there's because it's kind of like wave based a bunch of enemies like say like six or seven enemies with hooks who are running at you to attack you you put them in your slow down orb it goes and then they're just like super slow you use your big sword attack turns them all inside out you can see their skeletons flash blue for a second you get your shotgun plop 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 splat 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 just a beautiful rain of blood and guts and I love it. I love it so much. It's such a fun shooting experience. So, uh, if I remember before, you you liked Outriders, but this sounds like you're like really enjoying Outriders. I love the combat. The story has, has, has the stuff like has stuff been improved with it? Like, 
Uh, it's the same combat, to be honest. Yeah. You, you're getting more fun games, uh, guns, because like it's it's loot driven, and you can like really like destroy a lot of loot to build up a really nice build. So you can kind of focus on what skills you want and put a lot of power into it. There's like freeze abilities, uh, so you can freeze something. So you have a maybe you have a piece of armor that like contributes to how long something stays frozen but also how much damage you do with a gun when something's frozen and you just stack all of that together like it's good shooting with fun buffs and debuffs and kind of weapon building that you can kind of just build a monster and the way you get health in this is uh, it's called like weapon leech so you have to do damage to gain health back so you're always trying to manage cooldowns and make sure you're just popping things to constantly get back stuff. So I, f I find the combat really, really, really satisfying. It's kind of in what's like a really goofy story, like that's kind of just disposable, to be honest. Sometimes it's fun and sometimes like you're kind of like, okay, but mostly you're kind of skipping it to get into it. The big problem is it's most fun. It's like you play as a team of three. It's most fun with other people. It's super hard to get people to play this game with you. Is it free to play? It is on Game Pass. I'll give it a shot sometime. Um, but the World Slayer DLC is not on Game Pass. And the World Slayer DLC brings you to a new area that's snowy and it's really pretty. It's like it's like an ice storm has taken over. So you haven't seen snow in the main game. So it's all like beautiful snowy areas with like like just crystalline lakes and kind of blue and purple shimmers and spikes of uh, ice everywhere. And I was like, wow, this is really beautiful. And then they take you to like a swampy, like fish village for a while. And then you're like, okay, not so beautiful. But then you have to fight an evil fisherman in a big yellow fisherman's coat. And you think it's a ghost for a while. I think fishermen cool. make fantastic boss fights. He was very good. He had two big hooks and his hooks would pull you towards him. A lot of, lot of, lot, lot of suck in attacks. But one of my moves is a teleport behind. So if he sucked me in, I would teleport behind a just an ad and get out of his thing. So you're like, you're doing a lot of fun little stuff with it. They're building up all these kind of sub bosses on the way to the big boss. And there's a bit of story element where one of the characters you're with, Kana, is just like having visions. And she's like, man, the whole world's going to die because of this one lady who's going to fuck your shit up. This... World, World Slayer, Slayer, perhaps. Mm. So you have like a path laid out for you to like go deal with this. Um, and I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm on it. I'm having fun. The downside to this, because of course there is, is this DLC is super expensive. Kind of shockingly expensive. How much? What would you say is too much for DLC that runs around eight hours, but you could probably like replay Alan like. 30 euro up oh, oh no yeah, it's 40 euro and like, that's not good 30 <laughs> like i'd agree with brian 30 euro but like for 30 euro i'd want to be coming out thinking that fucking kicked ass yeah like like stray like is 30 euro. yeah yeah i was, I was yeah. about to say stray is a seven hour game which uh, i've not played and I, I'm, I'm gonna play next week probably i'm actually gonna try one of the higher tiers of playstation plus Ooh. because if you do that it's 15 euro for the month and you get it Okay, and then cancel it? Yeah, and then cancel it because I don't need to own Stray because I'm only ever going to play it once. And also the physical copy, I think, is September or yeah, something. Yeah, and it's 45 euro. Yeah. So, like, but 40 euro for the fucking DLC? I know. Yeah. That's way too I know. Money. I know. I bought it in a fit of, like, I don't know, mania. I was just like, yeah, like, like I played the whole entire game on Game Pass, so it's kind of, like, justified it as, like, I haven't given the devs anything. Yeah. It's okay, I bought, I bought the... Sell till Nurse Figma today for fucking way too much money. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to feel something. Yeah. So, so, like, for me, it's when you play one of those, like, waifu JRPG games on the Vita or whatever, and they'll have DLC, and it's all listed as, like, two euro individually, but there's, mm. like, a hundred fucking bullet points on the DLC, and, like, there's no, like, and, yeah, combined, it's, like, a hundred quid for that shit. 
And it just feels like one of those things where it's like, this is very niche DLC and people will pay. That's it. The people who are still playing it are running the end game con- content. And the end game content in, in like Outriders is like, it's pretty fun. Like you have um, your tier system, but they change to apocalypse tiers. So things get harder and harder and harder and you get like better and better loot and you can kind of mess around with your builds. Uh, but it was getting to a stage where no one was playing. So this brought in an influx of old players back again. I, I guess that's the thing. Like they know if people have hit the end game that hard that there's like a there's a market there yeah there is an audience that are going to drop 40 or to play this um and here's one of them yeah and like i'm enjo- i'm having a lot of fun and i was just like man i really like elements of this game um but it's just yeah it's just it suffers from the lack of people playing it a lot of the time if you were to buy World Slayer now, you can, it's like, it's pure in-game. So if you have a character that you haven't finished the main game with, you cannot play this. You need to finish the main game because it continues on from the end. Oh. So at the, like, it's about like, you're like a colon, like a, like a colony ship that gets stuck. So you're getting the po- drop pods down and then a drop pod ha- comes down and that kind of kicks everything off in this. So it's connected to the end of this. But what you can do is make a new character and level straight to there. It'll kick you to, it'll push you towards World Slayer if you wanted to play just that. So like it, but not, I don't like the price. Cool. Yeah. Brian. Yes. Three houses. Fire Emblem Warriors, three hopes. Three hopes. Oh. Okay. I apologize. Uh, John, you're going to give your full apology. Thank you. Okay. <sighs> hey guys. Um, a little while ago on the Let's Fight a Boss video game podcast that's my, my video game podcast to do with Brian Neve if um, people don't know faster I am I I misspoke and said the slower name of faster Fire Emblem Three Hopes wrong Slutty. and I really just wish that hadn't happened because uh, you know we all make creepier can I keep being slutty but also creepy? Because, oh, yeah. you know, we uh, <laughs> we all make mistakes, you know. And just, sometimes you say things wrong and you don't know what to do. I don't want to do this anymore. Right? <laughs> and then just be like, like as if you didn't do anything wrong. Uh, so I don't know what everyone's fucking problem is. That's a good answer. There we go. That's what it just, sorry, I just, <laughs> I have straps, so I just need to. Brian is co- recovering from the virus. Yeah, I got the Rona in between. Yeah, the, the, fu- the, fu- <laughs> the final pillar fell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we were talking about it last week. Oh, Brian didn't get it. Brian got it. <laughs> like the following Brian day. You, oh. you didn't seem to have too rough a time with it, though. No, and I'm a happy little fucker in my domestic situation. So. Yeah, me and Michelle were saying that. We're like, Brian's going to be fine. <laughs> like, yeah. just isolating to one room. If any of us yeah. can do it, Brian can do I, it. The, I, just, the, like, I, I am just like a human pet with my setup. Like, you know how you see, like, a hamster cage, and you're like, man, that hamster's got everything. <laughs> I've never thought that. I've no. never, ever thought that. I, I look around my I look around in my, my personal space, and I'm like, dude, you, you're fine. Don't, you've got, like, a nanny figure. No you're doing need. all right. No, I was like, I, I don't run, but I was like, I need to run. I need to move. I need to get out. <laughs> yeah, I, and, like, I did get a bit stir-crazy, but, like, it took a long time for that to happen. I got real... I got real fucking stir crazy. Because, like, the way it happened for us is, like, it was me week one, Michelle week two. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. By the end of it, I kind of had that thing where, like, just spent two weeks looking and speaking to no one but Michelle. And at the end of it, still pretty into her. So I was like, well, that's fun. Yeah. That's nice. That's a good sign. So Fire Emblem Warriors. Fire Emblem Warriors. Oh, yeah. Fire Emblem Warriors. Is a alternate sequel spin-off to Fire Emblem Treehouses, which came out in 2019. Almost three years ago now, I think. Yeah, about three years ago. So, yeah, this this is pretty good as a kind of, like, continuation sequel spin-off. This, and, like, I guess it's very much an alternate timeline, and the Warriors games relish that because it's all they can do. Half the Warrior games or Musou games, I guess, some are original IP, like, like the Dynasty Warrior series. But to keep that business afloat, they are doing so many licensed IP spin-offs. By my estimation, they are releasing a game every nine, ten months. Fucking hell. And I have played so many of these fucking games. And I didn't realize how into Musou games I was until I, like, 
know everything that is going to happen before it happens at this point. In fairness, when you do lock onto a Muso, it is a real nice just... Yeah. It is just pleasant slush <laughs> that you just sit down and zone out with. Yeah, and I've played good Musos, and I've played bad Musos, and I've played in between Musos, and unfortunately, in my opinion, Fire, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes is one of the in-between ones. Okay. I don't think it's an A-grade game. It's definitely not a C-grade game, but there are good things and bad things about this game. Does it give you enough of the Fire Emblem guys? Enough, yeah. Uh, I played 15 hours of this game, which is like, you know, if I didn't like this game, I would have stopped before 10 hours. In Fire Emblem, it makes sense that this is an alternate timeline because they introduce a mechanic in Tree Houses where you could undo stuff. And so it seems to kind of fit in with that narrative that this is just a what-if scenario where the protagonist Byleth from the other game isn't the protagonist and isn't the kind of mercenary that they bring into Garrick Mock Monastery School and instead it's a different protagonist called Shez. But Shez also has the connection with an ancient deity that gives you summoning powers. It's, it, it, in, and in this version, Byleth is the villain. That's a fun angle. And it's the same characters from Tree Houses. They are themselves and the writing is great and there's new outfits for them, especially after the time skip. They look fantastic in their warrior outfits and it's fun hanging out with the gang again. Of course I picked Black Eagles and with Edelgard we are having the time of our life. I feel like that's kind of the only way this game could have really truly failed if it got that stuff wrong, yeah, right? And, mm-hmm. yeah, and it doesn't at all. Like, like to me, I like it, it. It's satisfying that. What's bringing it down is that, and I was saying this to John the other day, is that Shez is an interesting character, and by default, you end up having Shez every time you're playing uh, a mission. And usually, when you play a mission, it's you and you pick three other characters from the roster. And then you're switching in and out and you're doing kind of like, I guess, live act or a or, or, or real time strategy while you're mm-hmm. alternating between characters and building up meters. And that stuff works out really well. It's very satisfying. Shez seems to be a unique standalone character. And one of my favorite things about Warrior or Muso games is that all these unique standalone characters have really fun animations, have special attacks, have like a really interesting run or dash. Or weapons and because, all like, that. Because like so much of Muso game is the feel, and so much of the feel is like you know individual attack rhythms or animations or all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and yeah. so two games I absolutely love for this were the One Piece Muso games and the previous Zelda Hyrule Warriors, which is the Age of Calamity Breath of the Wild alternate timeline uh, spin-off game. And like, there's a lot of different body types and shapes and heavy and light characters and anything in between feels unique and you kind of fall into who you like playing as and who you don't like playing as, and then all of a sudden, the character you don't like playing as, you kind of unlock interesting aspects of them, and all of a sudden, every character has something good about them. But what I've noticed with this Fire Emblem Warriors game is that you can change the class of characters, and, like, in the original game, you could do that too, but, like, there was very much, like, a archer character or a cavalier character or I guess like a like a heavy fortress character with an axe. And like there is still some of that there. Like Shez feels like an original character. Uh, Edelgard does. But what I've noticed is it is animation that is applied to a skeleton. And so when you play as an archer character, you get the archer animation. And when you play as sword or, or a thief character, you have that animation applied to the skin of, Mm -hmm. because they're all Fire Emblem humans. A lot of them are approximately the same height and build. So it feels a bit stock. Oh yeah. That's really disappointing. Now, now, when they do their special attack, you get a cutscene that is specific to that character. I mean, at least it's that. Yeah, at least it's that. But like, when you're running around playing as them, you are not, like, you, you are playing as a sword with like, the skin of the character you like on top. And that doesn't feel, good and that feels like underdeveloped and kind of like taught as a cast aside to the rest of the game because other parts of it are so fleshed out and detailed why isn't this bit the same as the rest mm-hmm. of it so that's kind of bringing me down I'm, I'm not really enjoying playing as characters or i don't feel them being 
unique to their roles. Do you know how long it is? I'm not sure, and I don't know how... Like, like I'm doing the Black Eagles route, but obviously there's three houses. And the, the fourth house is actually in this game, and they introduce that in a really fun way. And so I have most of the fourth house unlocked, and they do do a good job of kind of, like, getting you to recruit other members from other houses to build up your roster. And I have permadeath turned on, but nobody's died on me. But what's happened now is that I kind of have like a crux of four characters that I'm specifically leveling, leveling up. And then if I need to level up another character, it's like the bare minimum just so I can do their like paralog quest line. Which is kind of what you do in the main game anyway. Mm. It, it's good. It's not that good. Sure. Do you think you're going to finish it? I don't know. I don't like playing this game sometimes, but then sometimes I do. There's a lot of like base building as well and a lot of metrics in the background and I'm finding sometimes I'm playing the game as a real-time hack and slash game but then I'm like oh I'm gonna have to go back in and I'm gonna have to crunch some numbers after this to optimize like every ev like like for each time I do a mission I make sure that my loadout is as beneficial to the next mission. Right okay and do you like that side of it? Yes and no. Okay. It's you're really just treating these characters like their numbers and XP. Mm. Brian, that sounds eh. Yeah. Like, it's also it's... not the prettiest game I've seen. No. But either was Tree Houses. Yeah. No. Um, like sometimes it looks good and then sometimes it looks cheap. There's def The contrast is definitely up from uh, three, three Houses and like there's brighter like effects kind of happening with st uh, with stuff but other times like it's just like here is a brown field for you to run through for yeah. hours but then that kind of happens in Muso you know yeah but does that happen in the quarry brown sludge mm -hmm. yeah there's a lot of it class <laughs> oh yeah it's brown town uh, yeah, I'm playing the quarry and I'm playing it couch co-op with my partner and how that works is you kick on couch co-op and you assign characters to each person. We don't know who the characters are in this game. We've never met them. So there's just a list of say 10 characters and we just did a schoolyard pick. I picked one, my girlfriend picked the other one and we went back and forth until we had five each. The setup, the prologue of this is you were two older teen camp counts, uh, camp counselors on their way to camp a night early because uh, they just want to check out the place set up before uh, the other counselors come the following day and the kids come the next day and they see something on the road and they swerve off the road they're not sure what they saw but while your boyfriend max is uh dealing with the broken down car you as laura uh, travel into the woods and the first thing i found was a sign that said silas the dog boy <laughs> Class. <laughs> yeah, and I was just like, okay, <laughs> Silas the dog boy. <laughs> Hell yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm down. And then the next thing I found was a trunk um, full of um, Houdini stuff, like a, a straight jacket to get out of a, a trick kind of pool. Okay, kind of uh, stuff. Let's bring it back to Silas the dog boy. I'm, I'm just worried that he's not going to be the central focus of Hang the on. horror now. We have carnies? A little bit, maybe, because there's also a woman with a crystal ball. Yeah. So I was like, oh, is this carnival stuff? Okay. Uh, we meet a cop. The cop tells us, don't go to Hackett's Quarry tonight. You have to go to this uh, motel. Don't go there. We go, sure, officer. And then the kids drive straight to the quarry. You cannot pick a destination out of this. You I cannot stop this. This is a critical path. You will get there anyway. It's a very good multiple choice game. Yeah. Yep. Um, so... Spoilers for the prologue, it's very short, but uh, you get there and you find a dog collar <gasps> and it doesn't say Silas, but it says Ian. And then oh. you're like, Ian the dog boy, and something attacks your two count camp, count, uh, camp counselors. And then cut, following day, it's your whole big team of camp counselors saying goodbye to the kids, getting on the bus, and they're just like, guess it's our turn to leave. Or is it? And that is the setup for the quarry. <laughs> it is like... Uh, in They're getting very good at facial animation. The faces in this is the best that they've done. Because yeah, I guess like the last one of these I can think of is that one from... Year? Until Dawn. Until Dawn, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which has like named... Like has Rami Malek in it. So they, they've done like the whole... Um, 
dark pictures anthology in between. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, and they yes. have names in this as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like this, they have David Arquette in this. Sweet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Makes sense. Like, what else do you want to do? Wrestling? But the facial animation looks really good. Sometimes characters look like the eyes are really good now, but the mouths are a bit weird. Everyone's a bit gummy. Like, they're kind of. I don't know. I don't, it's hard to describe where I you're think, just I think like. I kind of know what you mean. It's just like I, the lighting I, I and the faces that. are There's really good. Like, there's always like a little too much teeth and gums. Mm. Not just in not just in these games, but in anything that really tries to do facial animation as well. I thought um that Rockstar game, uh LA LA Noir. LA Noir was like that as well. Everyone looks like a sad pineapple in my game. So um you're like, okay, these these camp counselor kids, they look good. Like they're all actors. They uh they're like filling their archetypes, you know, you got a jock, you got like the hot girl, you got like a nerdier guy who's a bit obsessed uh with getting with another girl. You kinda you have a few different guys. What's good and enjoyable about this so far is there's a sense of mystery to what's going on. Like Silas the dog boy is a hook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Love it. It's like very good. Um, and I'm interested in following that idea where it's kind of falling down. It's kind of feels like nearly a step back from Until Dawn, where Until Dawn felt very much like a video game. You had control of these characters and you moved them through the world. And then you got like maybe some quick time events and some question based stuff. With this, you move the characters in what I would call a kind of search phase. So you're giving a room and you have the characters and you can control them around the room and they can press X at objects, whether it's a photo and they'll go, it's a photo of blah. This information isn't critical. You don't need to go, oh, who's in this photo? Sure. Will I be able to use this as information? You'll find maybe a you know, a ledger and he'll be like a ledger. And then you can read the ledger and there's some information in it. That ledger information is never critical information. Yeah, yeah. You know, it doesn't matter if you've missed it or not. So you search around a room and then it gets to, it kind of feels like an FMV game nearly where then you get to the, you know, the action part of the game, but control oh, so like is a, taken like away from action. you. Yeah, like a search okay, action. Yeah. Okay. Um, no. And then, like, control is kind of taken away from you, where your character, say, is running away from something, and then it's all quick time events. You're never running from it. You're never in control of the character getting away. There's no sneaking where you have to not get caught. The only time you are moving the characters independently is through that, like, picking objects up phase. And the one object that is critical for you to find are tarot cards that play into another element of the game that I'll speak about in a bit. So all the action is all purely quick time. The quick times are so generous, <laughs> like like super generous. And I remember in Until Dawn and just, I've played Man of Medan as well. Um, like you can you can fuck those up a little bit. It is I, so fun to fuck up as yeah, well. Yeah, but this not once, like all my characters are doing sweet flips over everything. They're They're getting away from everything. And the only time they mess up is when the plot requires them to mess up. For example, I have a gun and I'm playing as a girl and I get the quick time right, but the guy takes the gun off me anyway, you know? And I was just like, well, I got it right though, you know? So if I got it wrong, like, would it just failed in a different way? The way things happen to your characters or how they die are basically uh, like multiple choice decisions kind of thing you're in a situation you pick one or the other and it's usually down to just do you do the the instant thing or do you wait i just spend a lot of time just not pulling the trigger like you, sometimes it's a gun like it's like there's well, you, rattling in a bush you learned that bit from shenmue too exactly yeah i learned patience yeah. shenmue is like so hard compared to these <laughs> like it's just so hard oh neve you haven't seen nothing yet oh so it's like you hear rustling in the bushes and like the kids are like, Wait till we like fight the genie. let's shoot the bushes, but like you're missing people from your team. Don't yeah. shoot the bush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you don't shoot the bush and a character pops out. So I haven't lost anyone at yet and I'm nearly finished. I'm on like chapter like seven and I think of like 10 maybe or 11, but I'm towards the end of the game and no one has really died. I can remember what Until Dawn 
you can keep pretty much everyone alive. Until and then, the last moment. And at the last moment, there's so many fuck. There's like a big explosion, gas and explosion. And I have heard similar things with this yeah, game. And it's okay. like a big Rube Goldberg contraption mess and you just can't fucking mess it up at all. I presume I will lose some of them in, in towards the end. Or, or the thing is, sometimes you do execute a thing and that is the kill. Mm. So you have to know which ones to like ignore and which ones to pay attention to. So... The story and the horror in it, there is dog boys. Uh, There is a transformation sequence, which I don't know if it's just kind of a, it was a limitation thing, but the way they did it is actually so brilliant. I love it. It's just really gross and wet and gooey. Um, (laughs) But it kind of felt like nearly like a cheat, but it's a cheat that works really well. Okay, sure. Other animation, not great. Like if the characters need to do anything more than walk, it gets a bit ropey. The water in this looks like sludge as well, and there's a lot of scenes of them swimming and in the water because they're at a camp situation. Doesn't look great, and I'm playing the PS5 version, and I was just like, mm, just didn't, didn't go into that. But um, graphically, like the locations are nice and they're moody, like it's it's spooky. It's a fun game to play with someone, but uh, I don't know when it comes to like how involved you feel i feel very not involved sometimes i feel like i'm watching i'm just watching an fmv thing and mm. you're getting that like like go left or right kind of thing but it never feels too critical yeah. and i'm like flying everything with passing colors so enjoying it but i don't i just don't think it surpasses until dawn i feel like until dawn really felt more like a video game and same with man of madan i felt there was more on me as a player you would know would you ever go back and give a uh, house of ashes a shot yeah i might since that seems to be the best one out of the well, dark pictures for me, the way i'd put it is like for every other one of those games me and steph were kind of just chatting we're yeah. just like talking about whatever house of ash was the one where we were like like just actively really following the plot and wanting to know what was going to happen because it was like the story was actually pretty good mm-hmm. not like amazing but the game was compelling but yeah we were we were compelled okay, for sure cool. that's good yeah, well, like, my, also playing this, I've been just, you know, I was like, these are fun games to play, you know? And they're fun games to play with a friend. Yeah, absolutely. So I totally will go or back a, and play that. girl friend. Friend is a girl. Or a girl yeah. friend. Yeah. yeah, I like, I feel like I can't give it a glowing review because I haven't finished it. And I feel like, like, that's where things will kind of hinge. Like, if everyone survives, I'm going to be like, that was too much of a cakewalk. You, you, want, you, want, you want some fallout. Yeah. But you don't want you don't want the characters you like to die. Like currently I would never play this again again because like I wouldn't do anything different. Sure. Like I feel like there's not there's nothing where I'm going like, what if I didn't do this? Yeah. Like yeah. everything feels very like on the path it it's, should be. It's funneled in yeah. to the where yeah, where they mm-hmm. want it to be. You're not missing anything. I don't feel it so anyway. Yeah. Which is not good in a game that kind of sells itself on choice space yeah because like, like i'm thinking of like a david cage game like yeah. detroit or whatever and like there's so much you can yeah. miss in that for better or worse <laughs> yes but, exactly like, yeah, i remember us like our discussion about detroit at the end of that like there was full-on like environments that some of us had never mm-hmm. been to and yeah. stuff the android concentration camp never saw it <laughs> until my girlfriend played it and i was like what <laughs> <laughs> well i remember i killed connor like 10 times yeah <laughs> And, and crossing like, the road yeah like <laughs> i just kept making him die in the factory to send out a new one and he had no relationship with the detective it was great so funny but then you know so i still think back to that game and i still think that bit where you play as connor and go to the detective's drunken home i still remember that kind of fondly oh yeah mm-hmm. only part of that game i remember fondly but yeah i still think of the massive big muscly robot having not said a single word to the little girl the entire game and he just kneels down and he goes, you're the most amazing person I've ever met. <laughs> How fucking funny I thought that was. It's a lot. <laughs> I kind of like, I'm actually kind of itching for a David Cage game, to be honest. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, they'll get your Star Wars game. Yeah, I can't wait. I yeah. honestly can't wait. Oh, that'll be something. It can't be mm-hmm. anywhere. It can't be boring. <laughs> you know? <laughs> will there be it much, might not be great, but it will not will be there boring. Be much David Cage in that game? Because you know Disney are going to have like the everything airtight. He'll sneak something in yeah. and there'll be like a fucking riot over it. It's going to be brilliant. The woman has a dream and a bunch of strange men are attacking her. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's QTEs. Yep. Mm-hmm. Quick time events. Mm-hmm. 
So I guess the big news item is that Bayonetta 3 launches on October 28th. I didn't see this coming. With this game, uh, Hideki Kimiya is usually like the spokesman of Platinum Games and he's very defensive all the time, which is yep. very fun. And people are always asking about Bayonetta 3 and he's like, shut the fuck up. And finally he went, you know what? Now you can shut the fuck up. Like he was very proud to present this trailer. Um, but yeah, it, it, here, here is a very clear announcement of this game and when it's out. Yeah, everything in it looks cool. A little disappointed about the design of the new girl. I... Yeah, she looked okay, but then it showed her... She looked her very, like, Xbox 360 character. Yeah, but then for me, when they showed her, like, sections, like, the gameplay sections that she's in, they looked really interesting. Yeah, they looked fun. Yeah. And this is a younger Bayonetta, like, younger than she is in Bayonetta 1. I guess it's kind of like she's in her early 20s, late teens. Cool. As a character design. Because I guess, like, I don't know, like, I, I know Bayonetta's, like, a couple thousand years old, but I guess she's in her, like... Late thirties, early forties, and Bayonetta one and two. Visually. Jean looks great. Jean looks great. Mm -hmm. This is running on the Switch as the best as it can. Yep. Uh, Nintendo are funding these games. I'm sure someone else is kicking themselves over not funding these games because they're fucking ridiculous. And I, I, I'm very excited. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm pumped. It's gonna be gonna be real interesting to see where this one lands. Yeah. One of my favorite things about Bayonetta is they are genuinely good time travel stories. Yeah, they're really fun. Like the so, second one is so good that it makes the first one better. Yeah, like like the time travel in the second one is so it like it really leans into the grandfather paradox time travel story, but does it in such a fun way and explains stuff from the first game, but not in like a shoehorned way. And this is absolutely going to lean into the time travel stuff again, and I guess it's someone interfering with the timeline, and well, let's see how we get on. Mm -hmm. Alien Fireteam Elite gets PC and console crossplay. That's that's what it is. Um, I like this game, but you could not get a game with a team, and you need a team of three to play this game successfully. And I kept saying, I wish this had crossplay, and finally they're implementing crossplay, and it's coming with a new game mode called Restock Turrets, which is exactly what it sounds like. You have to keep your turrets restocked. Um, I'm excited to go back to this and actually be able to play with people. Cool. A GoldenEye 007 remake reportedly in limbo due to war in Ukraine. Yep, that's it. That's the <laughs> yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff Grubb has been like, you know, talking about this game existing for a really long time. It seemingly might be ready to go, but it's just kind of been put on a shelf mm. because of. Yeah, I'm thinking of GoldenEye now, and yeah, like yeah, there's, there's the entire a... story is like about Russians. Yeah, and <sighs> it, it's got Mila jo jo Jovovich in it. Like she, she she's from the Ukraine. Wait, Mila Jovovich is in Goldeneye? No, she's not. That's in 95. Is she? She's not. <sighs> Sorry, I need to... No, we got it. We got it. No, hang on. Like, yeah. norm normally I'm like, Brian, no, we're podcast. But right, I need to know this. Goldeneye is in... Brian. That's 95. Like, she'd be really young. I mixed her up with Fam K. Jansen. It's okay, Brian. It's all right. It's... Uh, only, sin. only leave all this in. Leave it all leave in. It all in. I, I need to learn Let from my life. Let the shame hang. I was wrong about a woman in a movie in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. That, that if you've seen the movie, if you played the game, it's like there's a lot. Like the Golden Eye is a uh, space war weapon that the Russians steal the plans. To, it's basically the Death Star, but it's like the Russian Death Star. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So yeah, of course it's in limbo. Alicia Alicia Vikander I'm so sorry Sorry, um, is... sorry. We're, 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 we're very sorry Alicia Something else is in Limbo And it's Alicia Vikander's Tomb Raider sequel movie But they were really setting up the first one For a second one I know she and it was like two guns it was, it was going ahead But Amazon bought out MGM they did. So Alicia Vikander in a uh, interview for Ent Entertainment Weekly just said, I don't know, it's politics because it's to do with buyouts and stuff like this. It might not happen given I think that Embracer Group has like owns the IP of Tomb Raider Man, now. Man, they're sure spreading themselves far <laughs> and wide, aren't they? Yeah, and they have kind of like hinted at them liking wanting to do like 
re like remakes and stuff or then remasters um i feel like we might m pivot away from survivor tomb raider and either do something again or like push the like legend trilogy stuff so who knows i feel like tomb raider in all its forms except for the netflix animation which is just like it's made and it's coming out pretty much oh does it look good I'm, I'm not gonna watch it. Like, okay. the same way the Shinmu animation, like, anime, it looks fine, like, but I don't, I don't know. I need to watch the Shinmu animation. It's supplementary material. Yeah. I like watched it, the first episode, but it just broke my brain. Because <laughs> it's super faithful in a way that gives me, like, the most uncanny vibes. See, this, I think, w might be interesting, because it's meant to be a continuation of like what happens after Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So that makes me think they're not doing that in a game. Like they're not going to do a follow on game if they're gonna continue that narrative into an like an animation series. But I don't know, oh, again, shit. super Oh shit, did limbo. you guys see the trailer for the Tekken anime? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that looks cool. Looks cool. Really cool. Look really chunky character mm -hmm. designs. Yeah, it looks great. Looks uh, like they were all, they're 3D models, but they look nice. I think it's going to be, the way a lot of these work is it'll be 3D models and then some bespoke 2D animation. Mm. But that can, that can look good. That can actually yeah. look pretty dope. So I hope, I hope it's good. I was always like obsessed with the idea of Ogre killing um, June because I was just like, because that's like the story you're told, but there's like a, I think it's the intro graphic to uh, like Tekken 3 and he's holding like a head but it's like silhouetted and I was like is that her head and like to kind of have those to see that happen in animation it's like that's really weird intense, yeah. like that's super intense I hope Jin gets to the finals and he's like the weight is ogre <laughs> you like that Brian? that was oh, a good one yeah. yeah I could see he's an ogre so that's pretty good yeah, yeah. Uh, emails And that's yeah. That's it for news. That's yeah, I know news. we, we mm -hmm. had big news last time, but you know who gives a shit anymore? Like it's not. What's the point of trying? Yeah. Ask let's fight a boss at gmail.com. Now, do you remember last episode? I was like, we're only allowed one email in. Mm -hmm. We did they all get together and decide which email? Oh yeah, no, there there was one there. Okay, uh, precisely one email. Okay, let's have it. This one is from Lee. Hi, Brian. In John. John. It says he, and, and Neve. Just Neve's, Neve's, Neve's You probably tried to spell Neve's name, Neve's name weird and just spelled it right. <laughs> it spelled correctly, <laughs> yeah. I've contacted all Elfabbers and we've agreed that this would be the only email sent this cool. week. Cool, all 20,000 of them. That's yeah. good. Rest assured, any other emails have been sent by imposters and people trying to sabotage the podcast. I believe that. Outsiders who don't actually listen to the podcast. Uh, my question is, have any of you ever made OCs before? Well, I'm not an artist myself. I spent a lot of my adolescence and teenage years on Tumblr and then opened my eyes to what an OC is. If you have had any OCs before where they completely their own character, with their own world, like John, like when John talked about Angel City. City. Mm or part of an existing piece of media, uh, you know, like I have this one piece OCs. Thanks for making a brilliant podcast, sincerely, Lee. We all work in animation or have worked in animation in some capacity. We are familiar with internally developed studio projects and sometimes you have a, you know, a little bit of an input in there along the way. And I guess we've all done student films, we've done personal projects and they have original characters mm -hmm. technically. My first OC, and I didn't understand the concept of C, but it was Joey Wheeler from Yu-Gi-Oh. And I know that doesn't make sense, but I took Joey from Yu-Gi-Oh and I took Jin Kazama from Tekken Tree and I would draw them as chibi characters in comics interacting together. And they had no concept of their lives like as a Yu-Gi-Oh or a Tekken character. They Neve. were, it was my character, Joey Wheeler and Neve. my character, Jin Kazama. Neve. Yeah. That's the best thing I've ever heard. <laughs> There's such conflicting personalities. Yeah. What's going to happen? I think, I think it's interesting you say Jin Kazama because I used to like take Jin Kazama and just like change him a bit. I'd give him like a beard, you know? And it's just, Jin Kazama is such a like vanilla character, but with such a stylish aesthetic. It's just like, it's so instantly recognizable, yep. the spiky hair and the flame pants. Oh, the flame pants. It's just like, it's so iconic and the red gloves with the studs on the so gloves. So much fucking drip. It's like, it's pretty good. I'm trying to think of all like the OCs I've made over the years. I love 
making films and I've made it one in a while maybe I will I don't know um, but I'm trying to think of all like the characters but then I'm like all of these are just background characters from a Paper Mario game that never came out because that game is so inspiring yeah. it's like how you like find mm. something that anchors you and then you stem out from that so much of your designs are like that. They're yeah. like little guys. Little guys. Yeah, you little love weird little guys. guys. I love mascot. I love mascot iconography. I love the simplicity. Like the, the more simpler a design that's being able to communicate something. And it might just be like, do not cross this because there's construction. But they have to have a little guy mm -hmm. explaining that. I love that. It's like something important and factual that needs to be distilled into a round little man <laughs> that's a really great way of looking at it so yeah a lot of my ocs are just like sanrio looking pieces of shit of those little guys yeah i i, I kind of covered a lot of this in a podcast i did with woolly check out um woolly will figure it out i patch wolf's angel city i think it is um it was the thing i thought of when I was like in my early 20s and I would sit down every night and draw more characters from it and it was really fun to work on and it's really embarrassing to listen back to now. Also, I have another thing that I've been working on for a while and... Yeah, see for me I was thinking about that. Yeah, mm. um, more on that in the future. John's building a world? Yeah. Maybe you can... We're gonna see John's OCs. <laughs> yeah. They're great. I made one recently just for something to doodle. Like, I never get to the story point of anything. Like, I never think of a story to attach the characters to. It's more, I want to draw these shapes. So I need to make a character that encompasses everything I like. So I have a vampire girl I draw and she has a mullet because I like mullets on vampires. Nate, do, you have any, do you have any pictures of her? Yeah, her name is Welly. <laughs> That's a fun name for a vampire. Um, yeah. So when can I doodle have, her on well board in the thumbnail art, uh, Neve, yeah. Neve, we need to have her. Oh, Neve, that's great. Neve, so. could she please be in the thumbnail art? I'll stick Welly in the thumbnail art. So I gave her a mullet because I like when vampires have mullet. That's inspired by Lost Boys and Meyer Link from Vampire Hunter uh, D Bloodlust. Absolutely. Um, I give her a really deep widow's peak. That's obviously like Bella Lugosi, uh, Lugosi like a vampire widow's peak kind of stuff. Dracula. Um, I give her pointy ears, Nosferatu. I like that and kind of grayish skin. Maybe she has two buck teeth. I don't know as well. <laughs> um, just the full like three piece suit with a vest and like a cravat and like a gym on her neck. She can turn into a bat and she lives her, uh, alone in her mansion where she builds Lego. You should draw more of her. That's cool. I doodle her. She's like I, I like I need something to doodle and then. I made a design so I could continue doodling her in different shapes. But she has no story other than she's a vampire that encompasses a lot of vampire stuff. I like to draw a mountain. He's like a really, really small mountain. Like he's way smaller than all the other mountains. And he wears clothes. <laughs> it's like a hoodie and a pair of shorts. Does he move? Yeah. Like he could, he's, he's kind of like a rock guy, but he is a mountain. Okay. Like he's shaped like a mountain. He's like, like a, a geodude? Yeah, I guess. Mm. He's kind of like if I was a triangle geodude. I get you. Yeah, and he has like a little snow cap hair. Is that style. not just a rock? No, he's a mountain. Okay. <laughs> like if, if you look at him, you're like, yeah, it's a mountain. It's mm. just he's got arms. Okay. He's kind of like, you know, you know that big rock guy in the never ending story? Yeah. Yeah, I love yeah. those guys. It's, it's kind of like that, but dressed like a Splatoon character. Cool. <laughs> but That's small. But he is a mountain. He's just a little mountain. Brian has always been great at like just the concepts of characters like that you would constantly be doing them in college oh, yeah. and I was always like how do you fucking make up that there's also an acorn and uh, he's grown legs so they're like they've sprouted at the bottom and then he has like a little twirl like a little bud on his head yeah I know that one depending Super on cute. his mood it can be whatever like oh well let's see that's kind of like Pikmin then so mm -hmm. you do have to like pull stuff but then it's Oh, you, you can't escape. Yeah. yeah. So so one of the characters for the thing I am working on, and um, this character I really like, really super proud of her, really happy. And the other day I was going through my manga caps folder and I got to Tepu and I was like, this is just a fucking main character from Tepu. <laughs> like, and it's just so frustrating. <laughs> oh, but, um, but yeah, it's just media that makes you happy and then yeah. it just yeah. like lives in your head. And the bakes and then you're just but i think at some point you just have to be okay with that yeah yeah 
I think um, I always felt a little deficit as an artist not having stories for characters, but um, I, I met a lot of peace with that being in animation because it's like, you don't have to think of all the stories. You can let the people who are good at storytelling do that and you can help bring that to life. And I think that's why I like the idea of collaboration so much. Cause like I hear Brian's stories of characters and they sound so cute and I want to draw them because when he describes them, they're so cute. And like, it's kind of hearing someone else's ideas and hearing these things inspires me to want to help make people shit, I guess. Well, like in the situation I'm in at the moment, I have someone who I send ideas and they send me drawings back. And it is the most thrilling thing in the entire world. Yeah, because like, you've, you've written a bunch of pros and prompts, I yeah, guess, and yeah. they get elaborated on. And like the way those ideas build momentum and develop and turn into other ideas, because I'll send my, I hate talking too mysteriously about this. I'll send this stuff to this person and they will send it back and they haven't just like translated what I've said, they've added to it. And it's, it's like mind blowing. Like I've never really collaborated with someone in this direct way, but it really like, it's just, it's, it's, it's like just pure creation. It's mm -hmm. so, it's so great. So I would really, you should find someone who- if, Oh, I work in animation. <laughs> yeah, but like, but like, but like, that's not, not I mean- I like, know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> like, like for your own joy, you know? Yeah, oh, I know. Because it is fucking awesome. Collaborating mm -hmm. partner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or just keep drawing your vampire because she's also great. Yeah. I will. What happens if she spilled blood wine on her, on, on, on her three piece suit? What would that look like? Throw it away and get another suit. Yeah, or, she takes or, it off, there's another suit right on under there. <laughs> what? It does, it's there's just, just an, always another suit. It's just an infinity yeah. suit. Because like, to me it'd be like, how old is Acrobat and how important is it to her? And you know, is, 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 is that an heirloom? Is it from an ex? Is there like, it'd be really, really funny if she wears it, but then she sees her ex. And she's like, shit, and then she can't wear it around her ex because her ex is going to be like, oh, that's that cravat I gave you. I did imagine that she had a hot wife, but the hot wife is a shapeshifter and never changes out of her bat form, so she can't do anything about <laughs> it. But that's about it. But yeah, I never get there with ideas with it because I like partially don't care. Like, I don't care what it means to you. I just think it's fun to draw. <laughs> and that's why I like when someone like Brian says stuff to me like that because it's just like, I don't know. You know? Has she ever shapeshifted into an octopus? She could try. As a fa With like, a mullet, okay, that would okay, be good. Because okay. like, there is a vampire squid, I guess, and... You... Something about that concept's really frightening. And like, mm -hmm. vampires can shapeshift, but it's generally a bat or a wolf. Rat or, or, or a wolf. Or, yeah, or, yeah it's, it's usually some sort of mammal or, mm. yeah, or, or, or a bird. You never really see it with like, aquatic creatures. Mm -hmm. But then I'm thinking of like, very, very deep down aquatic creatures. Because, you know, obviously a vampire can't be the surface level you gotta be where there's no light mm -hmm. brian your brain is so wonderful nice <laughs> i like brainstorming stuff like this so that's our one email yeah also wouldn't it be so funny if a vampire lived in the treehouse what would happen what's that about it would die pretty quick no but maybe the vampire is like a really good setup okay so it's like a house in a tree as opposed to a tree house yeah interesting that's just how wookies live <laughs> oh yeah they do they live in like a treetop town. Mm -hmm. We have some other emails. There are oh, for fucks, I knew it. They're a backlog email. They're timed before before the email that I just okay, read. Okay, sure. Um, how many um, how many emails will we let in next week? Eighteen and a half. Okay, guys, eighteen and a half emails. Same deal. Get together, have a conversations among yourself. Decide which ones need to go through and which ones we don't need. And like that one that I said, that's a half email. Figure that out. Yeah, yourself. figure it out. I don't, I don't technically know what that is. Yeah. Um, it could it could be spam, and then the last sentence is actually like, oh wait, no, this is legit. Yeah. But don't don't spam us. Or do I don't care. I just unsubscribe anyway. It doesn't actually affect us, to be honest. Sometimes people sign us up for shit, and I'm like, cool. Yeah, I, I get signed but like, up Google for like Google is really good. I get just... signed up for like Word of the Day stuff, and I kind of just picture the person being like, <laughs> <laughs> got him. This will show. <laughs> like, okay, dude. But sure. like Gmail is really good at detecting that shit. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is. Like a little too good, but you know, I guess that's why they read our data. <laughs> I guess it's just the trade. Okay, this one is from Wes, and it's a quintet of quick questions. Okay. Which I like these. Yeah. 
Hello, email Lord Brian, podcast queen Neve, and John. Devastating. That was fucking devastating. This uh, Wes, you little shit. I, I know who this guy is. Very good, Wes. Uh, got some questions which I intend for you to answer in some sort of instinctual, rapid fire fashion. Sure thing. Okay, boy. yeah. Yeah, fast. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. We, that always works out. Mostly about words, it turns out. Oh, all right. Do you have a favorite word? Silence is a very beautiful word. Um, I do actually have a favorite word and I forgot it. No. No's, no's a good one. I have a few that I think sound nice. I always thought forlorn sound like a different Forlorn's a lovely like, word. Like, that's a pretty word. Yeah. Uh, I don't like this creature, but ostrich is such a great name for an animal. Why don't you like ostriches? They're awful. Yeah, they're scary and cool. I don't think they're cool. I think, I, I think complete has a lovely sound. Oh, yeah. It's very satisfying. Way more satisfying than the word satisfying. There's some words that are kind of shit. Spade. Spade? Yeah, that you say, yeah, that's I'm what that you say. say it. Would you like a spam? <laughs> like, that's what it sounds like. Not your name. <laughs> I've never been a fan of the word milk. Milk? I like milk. milk. Well, any word sounds crap when you go, Rah, like, but spade, but spade actually <laughs> sounds like that. Spade. Complete. <laughs> no, because it's a beautiful word. You <laughs> still be like, complete sounds like cool robots. It's like, yeah. it is complete. I, I, I thought, I always thought that rigor mortis has a very fun rhythm to it that's mm-hmm. such a good like teenager band name yeah i think i knew so many bands called rigor mortis Just, words are bad mm-hmm. say the wrong word you're in trouble for the rest of your life yeah do you have a word <laughs> phrase bit etc that you use a lot with your partner uh that's been adopted my partner has started saying non-zero because of me and it makes me inexplicably happy every time she says it I guess you end up having a shorthand language with the person you totally. live with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I love saying the word weenie with Rebecca. Because, like, she knows what I mean when I say a weenie. And she didn't before. And she's like, why did you keep saying weenie? But now she knows, like, no, no, like, we'll, we'll, we'll watch an anime and she'll be like, that little shit's a weenie. And that's very, it's, it's, it's very satisfying. I do the same thing, but with Goofy. It's like, our neighbor's Goofy. Goofy. It's like, you, you, like, she's so goofy. For you as well, you like the word fucky. I do like fucky. Some things are fucky. Yep. Yeah. Couldn't uh, agree more. Town word... after 1 p.m. Fucky. fucky. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I like the word goober because it could be like uh, an adjective or a noun. Oh, totally. Me and Michelle have a lot of very odd little turns of phrase and things we only say around each other. And sometimes we talk about how weird it would be if anyone overheard us because we've just been building it up for so long. And Michelle will do this thing where she kind of. <laughs> It's like when she's watching something on her phone and it's her signal for me to come over and look at it. Like it'd be an animal fucking up or something and she'll just go, uh oh. And I think that's really, that's really cute and fun. That's everything I can think of right now. My brain is yeah. dying. Yeah, that's okay. Um, with our pet hedgehog biscuit, we have nicknamed them every possible version of meat out there. A little slammy. Little, oh yeah. L- little little mer- turkey boy. Little pursuit. Yeah, I think. Little Miracle Hot Dog was a big one. And uh, Little Burger Baby was another one. I think Cheeseburger, Pulled Pork, Stuffed Burrito. Yeah, there's just any form of meat that is edible has been named to this poor creature. Okay, what word or phrase do you use so much that it would be your catchphrase if life were a sitcom? Brian, me and you say bad game a lot, but I recently learned that you and your girlfriend also say bad game. Yeah, and she got it from Rocco because they knew a person that was a piece of shit that would say bad day, and they worked that into their vocabulary. He'd say sad day. Or sad day. I know that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The sad day story that Rocco Bodhi says, and it's such a good story. It's so good, yeah. I might try and add that to the loot drop, because it, it is just one of those like super relatable things. And like... It, it, it is something where, like, it's a stranger that you're kind of exposed to and they live rent-free in your head and all of a sudden something that they said amalgamates into what you say mm. in a completely different context. And so, yeah, bad game is... But, like, we, we, it'll be, like, bad game, bad show, bad movie. Yeah. But you have to say it in, like, bad game. And usually it follows, like, a really innocuous, tiny little flaw that's not important. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's what I love about it. <laughs> that's the funniest part. Yeah. 
Like, uh, well, this, this part of the menu, it's kind of it's a little difficult to navigate by game. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't actually, I, I can't think of like a catchphrase for myself. I can't think of one for you guys either. I think maybe humans don't work that way. No. Yeah, like I'm, I'm trying to think if we were like like a like a Woody from Toy Story or with the drawstring and you pull yeah. what what what's in our voice box, but I guess it's just like whatever an AI learning system would detect from listening to 166 episodes of this podcast. We need to do one of those like word bubble charts. Yeah, I think those can be like brutal in a way that you maybe don't expect. You you are exposed. Although, no, that's when you do it on the audience mm. and not the podcast itself. Yeah. Uh, okay. Do you have a favorite euphemism or piece of slang for an adult activity like having sex or smoking weed? Uh, I really like to say boning or referring to referring to joints as bones. The beast with two bucks. I love the phrase slamming it and the full sentence slamming it like a pog. <laughs> Me. I don't know. Jesus. You go, you go weed slang. Do I? I just go, I'm going to smoke weed now. <laughs> do, you want, do, you want, do, you want, do you want to light one up? Do you want to smoke a J? No, I just it's like, I'm going to go smoke weed. I like smoking a J. <laughs> Words are hard. Words are hard. Yeah. Words suck. Don't love them. Yeah. Don't listen to podcasts. Too much talking. Okay. Is there a theme in animation or visual art in general that you just simply cannot experience enough of constantly feel compelled to explore for me it's a tinkerer kind of character who has a back room with kind of like a workstation bench and it's messy but everything is also in its right place and sometimes they're like and uh, like a tinkerer of like electronics or sometimes they might, they might be like an engineer kind of character or they might just have like a, a kind of like a big kind of like piano like station. And think of that guy in Studio Ghibli film, whatchamacallish, Spir- Spirited Spider Away. Spider Dude in the Basement. Spider Dude yeah. in the Basement. Yeah, so cool. I love that. I like, I, I love a character that has their back to the audience, but they're occup- like, like their hands are busy. Yeah. And it's a character interacting with the background and you can see it and you can hear it. And you can feel it. I, th- I think for like the really longest, longest time, you know, I consume so much like shown in media and stuff like the pursuit of like ability and like the improvements of one's ability was always, always a huge thing. Like if you just take that really simple character concept and pair it up with like a cute design or a cool design, I'm in, I'm all in. I think the older I get, the more I start looking for stories where it's like people have achieved that ability and they're kind of like, Oh fuck what now? That's I think that's like I think those are the stories that resonate with me like harder the older I get. But um I, I'm always going to be a sucker for either one of them. And also like people who fight each other with the slightest bit of sexual tension in between. That's gonna do it. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. like literally any gay coding on any type of character. Just anywhere on the LGBT just, queer just spectrum a little, just a little gay yeah like literally anything I'm just like okay I can stick with this there's something here that's all I got that's my crumb just a little carrot on a stick mm-hmm. keep you going yep it's like oh she lingered a little too long on that other woman or hmm that character feels uncomfortable in their own skin this is enough <laughs> I can work with this yeah mm-hmm. it's definitely because of this mm-hmm why um, wouldn't it be? Also, just super earnest depictions of friendship really, yeah. really get me as well. Um, yeah. I, I, I love a relationship that isn't a romantic relationship. Yeah. You, you don't get enough of that. You mean, you mean like between boy and girl? For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah I was I was even going to bring it up without you saying that, but just the, the way the de- de- friendship is depicted in Chainsaw Man, like, breaks my heart. Yeah. Because a lot of it's just, just through posing, like, not even through big story beats or anything. It's just... All these two characters are so comfortable around each other. They're just leaning on each other while they watch a movie, and it's beautiful. I still think about the ending of Pacific Rim. And the, the male lead and female lead do their head bump. Should have, should have fucked. Should have fucked it was right just there. Like, it was like they easily could have done the fucking silhouette kiss or whatever. Mm-hmm. They didn't. But they didn't. Because like Del Toro knows tropes and cliches, and like I've, I've watched that film with the commentary, and it's so good. It's just him like pointing out, "This is from this anime. This is from this," and it's just him like. I, I don't know. I I, I, I I do like when you see the the creator 
making something and going, ah, 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 gonna do this. Because you know, because we all know you're tired of seeing the, the regular. Mm -hmm. Here's something stimulating. That's the last bit of that email. I don't know why our brains... It, it, it's, 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 it's still very hot in Ireland. Next mm -hmm. episode, we're going to... Now look, this was much better than the last episode. We all agree, <laughs> yeah. fucking train wreck. But the next episode, we're getting back in the rhythm. It's also not going to be hot anymore. But Brian, do you want to do one more email? Oh yeah, absolutely. One of us is going to get COVID again. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Just to ruin the rhythm. We're, we haven't got back on the horse. There's so many variants. Wiley Tim is just booking and... Killing the customers. Like, I, I like that Wiley Tim has become like the official mascot. Mm -hmm. If at some point someone felt like doing fan art for Wiley Tim, I'd be a. He's the, They're asking people to draw a horse though. I'm asking them to draw a Let's Fight a Boss mascot horse. That's true. You can put it on uh, two legs. You oh, can yeah. make it a furry. Yeah. Uh, these are music related questions. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I listen to that. I don't like music. This is from Crash. Hello, John Can Park. Oh, hell yeah. Slip Niv. Hell yeah. And Brian Tones. I have a gaggle of music questions <laughs> and a couple of hypotheticals. In an older episode, John mentioned he listened to Mastodon and Opeth. No, I didn't. That is not true. I've never listened to either of those bands. Never mind. Crash, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> okay. I've listened to Opeth. Thinking of a different... Um, I did Actually, I did listen to a little Mastodon. Maybe he's right. Huh. Do you know what? Maybe you... No, I, he's totally right. I deleted this information from my brain. Oh my God. I'm so sorry, Crash. Oh, okay. Let me pull them up on my 2021 spreadsheet and see what star I gave them. To whoever likes these bands, favorite albums or songs. Yeah, do you, do you, do you have any, anything to kind of relay on Mastodon or Opeth? <laughs> not a thing. The albums I listen to are pretty good, but clearly not enough to stick in my brain. So this one is also for you, John. Maybe you might have a better answer for this one. Okay. John, ever heard of the Berserk-themed deathcore band Brand of Sacrifice? Yep, they're pretty good. There you go. Any upcoming albums you're all excited for? I don't look forward to albums. I, I, they're there and I listen to them. What happens with me is it's like two or three months later, I'm like, oh shit, they dropped an album? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you put it, you put it aside and you listen to it. I, I'm never anticipating an album. I, I I can't keep up with them. It's always after the fact. I don't know if it's like that uh, with any of... Muna just released their new album, which I was anticipating. And yeah. it is very good, and I'm enjoying it a lot. There you go. I found myself listening to Deftone's first album a lot. Oh, that's really fun. I love Adrenaline. Yeah, and yeah. there's one song in particular that's so fucking great. I think it's called Be Quiet and Drive. Yeah, Far Away. That's not their first album, is it? Is it? It's, it's their it's, second. That's around the fur. It's it is around yeah, the fur. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So around the fur. I love be quiet. Yeah, be quiet. Good song. So good. Mm. It's got uh, that it, relay. It was, a, it was a weird thing. Like I, I always really like the Deftones. Like I like a bunch of their albums and stuff, but I hadn't heard that album. But I heard like the opening sting to be quiet and drive, and I was like, oh my god, that those guys. I have to find out who this is. And it was Deftones. And I was like, okay, yeah, back to Deftones again. Well, that re leads into any older albums you're excited to dig into. It seems like you're going through the Deftones backlog, John. I've been going through a lot of old music and backlogs and figuring out what I like. Yeah. Those Chumbawamba lads, let me tell you. <laughs> oh yeah, Good Ship Lifestyle. Yep, Good Ship Lifestyle, the greatest song of all time. They had more than one good song. It's not just the thumping. A Good Ship Lifestyle is so much better than the thumping. Holy shit. You know what, Brian? The no, One Piece it, AMV. Oh, it's really good. Uh, I remember following David Silverman. He's one of the main directors. I think I think it was him who was saying this shit. This is like ten years ago. I followed him on Twitter, and like he's one of the main directors on The Simpsons. He directed the Simpsons movie. He's, uh, we, we've met. Yeah, but I remember him taking the piss out of finding out that Chumbawamba broke up, and he was like, "Everyone, Chumbawamba broke up. Just woke up my children." <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, "Why is a Simpsons person like leaning like?" This is such a weird specific joke, but it's also aimed at a very specific kind of person. But I guess that's what humor is. There's like there's like a lot of late '90s metal that is like grim and forlorn in a lovely way yeah. that I really really like. Uh, I went back and listened to a bunch of Block Party, and I was like, "Do I like Block Party?" They're fine. <laughs> no. uh, honestly, no. Block Party, I. 
they had that album uh, si- si- Silent Alarm that came out like 15, 16 years yeah, ago. Yeah, that was such a um, animation college time. Like, I feel like it, that was used in a lot of reels and stuff. I think oh, yeah. I think sure. played at a lot of parties. I think I'm trying to think of them, and I think I'm thinking of Franz Ferdinand. They're way better than Franz Ferdinand, yeah. but they were like a response to that. Um, it's just because I watched what you call the trash theory who does like UK music mm. scene, but they did one on Block Party, and I was like, yeah, like they, they like to me, it's more like I appreciate bands sometimes more than the, the actual shitty music they make. <laughs> Not that Black Party is shitty music, it's just like I have shitty taste, and I don't like Black Party because I have shit taste. That's my it's, Brian, it's, it's my fault. No. But clearly people love Black Party. Fuck them! Fuck them! <laughs> I, I hate this shit with music sometimes. Where it's, it's not actually good music. Fuck, fuck you! No, okay, look. Fuck Coldplay, but you know what? Black Party didn't... I'm sure to find... John, do you like Coldplay? Because it, it's fine I'm if sure you if you played me a bunch of Coldplay songs, I'd pick one and be like, Oh, yeah, I know this one. This one's alright. Like, this is the thing. I don't, like, make a point out of disliking popular music either. I just... I just like what I like. The, the fucking Mr. Brightside, that's an incredible song. It's a very good song. I really like um, the Smile Like You Mean It song. Is that one of the... the who, who's that band? Not, not... I have no that's idea. That's either Killers or... Yeah, um... Killers. I'm trying to think yeah. of like... Yeah, Killers is such a like 2004 music. They kept making music after that and some of it was pretty good. Yeah. What was the band... Maroon 5, like there's so many. Oh, okay. I fucking hate Maroon 5. <laughs> oh, they suck. But I hate Maroon 5 because they're just, they're so mild and they're so non offensive and just dispassionate. I don't know. I have a weird thing with Pharrell Williams where it's like, I like him when he's collaborating, but anytime he's like, the more solo he gets, the. Like, I loved any or D. Yeah, exactly. They were super fun. And Neptunes yeah, are great. Mm. But then, like, when it's just Pharrell, I'm like, dude, just collaborate, please. The hat's not working. Only like one time. Is happy that song, cuz. Yeah. Fucking terrible song. <laughs> and. Uh, I, I think Daft Punk only have one good album, and I fucking hate all their other albums. I never liked them either. But see, I, love, I appreciate the aesthetic. See, I love Discovery. I think it's one of the thing, best things. Discovery is a great album, but if you want to ruin it for yourself, go down the list of samples they've used. And oh, it's, it's all like, there. It's just like, what are these guys? <laughs> like, apparently, seeing Daft Punk live as they come out and they hit play. Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> and it's just there's, there's nothing. Hmm. Um, old albums. I listen to Nine Inch Nails, Fragile, listen to that multiple times. Mm-hmm. There's, there's like a good... Occasionally, once a month. There's like a good decade of those Nine Inch Nails albums that I'll just go through and love every single one of them. Mm-hmm. With Teeth is... I, I know a lot of people don't like it. I fucking love With Teeth so much. It's fun. I think it was just at the time, because it was the new album, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people just Sure, and like I, I it. think it, it, it's the first one that... I think doesn't feel like a real 90s 90s album yeah. you know what I mean even though it came out a fair bit after that I really liked Only I think that was on that one Only was so yeah. good um, The Hand That Feeds is like mm-hmm. one of the biggest bangers they have um, I love that um, Nine Inch Nails remix album Further Down the Spiral that's cool so cool yeah I really like Year Zero which has now become more topical than ever you know yeah. that was fun um, I, I was part of the ARG for that so that was really it was the only ARG I was ever part of. Year Zero also had a really good remix album, and it has a song mm. on it called Gunshots by Computer. Fucking great. That's Saul Williams, I think, is in that. I love really? Saul. Yeah, Saul yeah. Williams is great as well. Uh, I, I, really, I, I really like that song, Me, I'm Not. Mm-hmm. And there's like a hundred different remixes of that. Like, you are going to like that song at some point. Mm-hmm. I obviously loved Hybrid Theory as a kid. And then I really loved... I, I liked Meteora, but um, I loved Reanimation, the remix album of Meteora. That was, like, really mind-blowing to me, and I think really kind of opened me up to music in a weird way. Um, I haven't actually listened to that in forever. My December is fun. I always thought that was pretty. So, one time, me and my friend used to duel to, <laughs> to Reanimation, and my December was my favorite song off that album. And um, our duels would last so long that we'd get through the entire album and my December would be at the end. And one time I had him beat. And I was just about to put down the card and I looked at him and I said, this is your December, Brian. 
It wasn't Damn. Brian, it was a different Brian. Yeah, I wouldn't play you, you wouldn't no. catch me dead playing that shite. No. It's not like that's become a huge part of your life in a strange way. No, it's not. It's not like I know way too much by osmosis. <laughs> <sighs> I don't need to know their blood types. <laughs> I do. And I tried to tell Rebecca, Rebecca, can you tell me all the Shibukai from One Piece? And she couldn't, and I was I told her a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh facts, and you know, yeah, Brian, you just you retain information in a, in a superhuman way. Yeah, for better or for worse, the time stamping gets weird. I know how you feel. Uh, I get told what Genshin Impact character's birthday it is. I think it was Scaramouches the other day. I don't know who that is. <laughs> that sounds like that's just a Queen lyric. Yeah, <laughs> like that's not <laughs> cool. Oh my god. Okay. I remember you guys mentioning you love new metal. So do I. Thoughts on Mudvayne? I, I don't know Mudvayne. Mudvayne are fun. Yeah. I yeah. like them. They're cool. I, I, it's not a real new metal fan. They're fun. Super high tempo. Yeah. Good stuff. Love their makeup. Brilliant. Okay, and then a couple of hypotheticals. Okay. Inspired by Brian's picture from episode 162. That's the one where I have the peroxide blonde hair as a 12-year-old child. Uh, if y'all were rappers, what would your names be in the title of your EP? Oh, well, we had that one ages ago. When we call it Crush and Sway, get your dick on. Yeah, me and Brian me and Brian made up a fictional rap group called Sway and Crush. And our, Sorry, Sway and Crush, yeah. And our, our, our hit single was Get Your Dick On. And you would sing it like... There was like tracks like Suck It Raw, yeah. uh, Hold Me Down. <laughs> my, my dad picks me up at eight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, don't come in. Uh, just <laughs> real good shit. And then the second album was called like Back to Basics. <laughs> <laughs> I, That's I, such a good name for a second album. Yeah. <laughs> I, love when, I love it when you forget about jokes you made and then you get then you get reminded and it's like, oh, that, that fits my humor perfectly. <laughs> Do you know what I found was that weird book where we wrote stuff down like looks like they're pulling time from the walls oh yeah yeah and then hey now I wasn't born <laughs> like full stuff <laughs> stuff like that like I get so reluctant to tell people about it because I remember like that was one of the funniest nights we ever had but how does that translate if you weren't there no because the madness had really kicked in at that point yeah, yeah. I remember like we made a joke on the podcast ages ago that if we were a rap group, we'd be called Dial Up Modem and the Angry Rap oh, Gods. Oh, yeah. And that's mm. pretty fucking cool, I think. Yeah, I remember you said, and I'm Dial Up Modem, and then there would be like a sting of like the, you know, the the, the sound effect of Dial Up. Speaking of which, um, Johannes. Who does, Johan. Johan, sorry. Who does us the remixes. Did you guys hear his fucking album? I did. It was very good. What the no. fuck? Do you want to loot drop that? If you yeah, sure, I, I will. Drop, I, I can't that. remember what I was going to loot drop earlier. If, on. if you if if you like hard electro electro stuff, it's sh- shockingly good. If you were all to form a band together, <laughs> I think we can answer. That. Who would you play? Or who would play what instrument? Okay, yeah. Let's let's, let's just talk about our instruments. Neve's playing acoustic guitar. She's country music. I don't know. Oh, I kind of no. see <laughs> Neve. I, I, I would kind of like to see Neve as like the lead. Oh yeah. I think she'd look pretty sick. Yeah, she'd be. She's got a spotlight on her. We're kind of like the two other guys from Aqua. Mm-hmm. I'm shy. I play drums. Oh. Okay, that can work. Okay, um, Brian is bass. I am keyboard. Brian, do you want to be keyboard? How do we do this? No, I'm bass. bass. My okay. voice is. It's, okay, yeah. it's all there in the. Somewhere. And I'm going to be playing keyboard, but I'm going to be so fucking pissed doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know I love that keyboard kid in School of Rock. And he looked like a mad scientist. Remember him? I've never seen School of Rock. What? <laughs> of all the like, you haven't seen X movie School of Rock, really? Is that good? No. I squish. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. fine. It's, it's so fun. fine. I try to like it, it. It's one of those movies you put on in two thousand and four, and it's fu- it's. it's Something like if if you're from a family of six and you watch that movie and everyone settles, like there's something in it for everyone. That's Flubber. Yeah, that's such a weird movie. Yeah, that's the family movie that has something for everyone. Oh yeah, absolutely. I haven't seen that in years. Don't don't quote me. I remember I watched I, I watched Flubber as a kid and I was like that was fun, but something about it's made me kind of sad. Oh yeah, I, I don't know why. It's a very stressful film. Yeah, because there's a lot of conflict to. to motivate the plot obviously but yeah you're very engrossed in flubber we got another question there 
That's it from Crash. That's it from Crash. Thank you, Crash. I'm so glad we don't have to do emails because I can't read. No, we're melting. <laughs> but we do have to do Patreon shoutouts. Oh, no. obligation to read out some shite guys I have these three books and I was just gonna set it on fire it's kind of a statement kind of an art thing you know what do you guys think I think you should just eat it especially if it's coins yeah and if it's an art thing okay yeah. um kind of want to put this was kind of meant to be like a, a setup to to push the page patreon no it really looks like you're sending a message and uh, it's gonna have okay an yeah no fuck it I'll do it okay <laughs> We like money. <laughs> <laughs> this is art. Yeah. Yep. Is it good? Who's to say? Hey, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're trying to learn how to do a podcast. It's, we're still figuring out the basics. <laughs> we need funding. Because <laughs> the only way you can make something is if it's financially driven. In it's today's true. day and age. Patreon.com forward slash LF80. Look. The Brian, transfer. Is, it, is it or is it not true that Patreon rang us up and we're like, how do you guys... <laughs> so, yeah, I spoke, what the fuck? <laughs> I spoke to a, a, a lovely person from Patreon. Her name was Claire. And I, I, I she was like, I should listen to your podcast. I was like, nah, don't, 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 don't do that. <laughs> That's my reaction as well. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you don't need to do that. Why? Why don't yeah, don't you know you why you're doing that. Uh, but yeah, she was looking at her metrics and she was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. And you know what? The whole thing, like, we take the piss out of the Patreon and the fans love it and we're going to keep doing it. Because, mm. like, ooh, it's just a fucking Patreon. Pledge if you want. Pledge if you don't. If you do, we really appreciate it. Yeah. You can type something. We'll read it out. Like, like the money's going to a good place, which is our pockets. And we are spending it on video games. And then we talk about video games on the internet. Look, It, it is... Mm-hmm. And you know, it funds it's, it, the hobby. It's, it's, cir- it's a circle of life. It's, yeah, the yeah. it's a really about. weird side hustle that we do, and we're so glad we have a community that is part of it, and they help us. And yeah, it's great, and, and that allows us to do it, and we get to hang out. I, and I'm trying to be dismissive every fifth sentence, but also I'm trying to reel it back in. I Thank don't you. say a lot in the Elfab Discord, but fucking boy, do I lurk. I say too much, and I, you know what? It's fine. Sometimes I see them say shit about me, and sometimes I'm like. They're little, some, they're little shits. Oh, they're the worst. My God. I'm proud of them. Except my nameless, my nameless friends. You should, you, should, uh, you should tell them, you know, react to them. You see, the thing about the nameless is that they need to learn to exist with pure emptiness. And so sometimes I just go months without stopping by. But they, I, the real ones get it. And the real ones thank me for it. And you're welcome. Now we're currently not accepting any new members in the nameless, but I will uh, open that up at a future date. That's good. Uh, so what I'm doing is every couple of weeks, I'm convincing one of them to leave. <laughs> I've, I've like I've got five of them to leave, and yet we are still the most popular faction on that entire Discord by a huge margin. Let's read these Patreon shoutouts. Oh dear God, <laughs> <laughs> John, this first one's yours. Shout out to the final form segment of the podcast, RIP. Wow, Shady Avenue. This this is this is an old. My request is just a line by each of you in my favorite impressions you do. You can say whatever you like. John, Rio from Shenmue. You wanna do it? I have to murder the man who killed my father. That's pretty good. For me it says Brian, John the robot who doesn't know how to feel. <laughs> my name is John, and I make videos for the internet. And I am positive. <laughs> okay, Neavit says here, angry gamer babies. Oh, no. I was really hoping it was going to be 16 of the clown. <laughs> I miss her so much. I'm not even angry at gamer babies. I'm too angry at, like, Sony specifically. I'll eat Jim Ryan's babies. Wow. Okay. That's really good. Yeah, that's really there good. Go. That hit. Okay. Neve, this next one is from you, from Darth Jamal. Hey, boss cast. I'm going to read this one. This one's from Todd Howard. Uh, hey, boss cast. Can you read this before the person in front of me? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dave. This is Dark Jamal. Uh, hey, boss cast. Just kind of wanted to say hi to the future me that would be hearing this someday. I hope the move goes well and that you don't freak out about leaving your parents. I know it won't be easy, but I believe in you slash me. Good luck, Jamal. P. 
P.S. Thank you for all the smiles, dissenting opinions, unexpected wisdom about growing up and, and life you tree goofballs have brought me. I wish the three of you and every listener to the uh, the best damn future we can get. Oh. Ooh, when was this? This was two years ago. <laughs> yeah, this was nearly mm. like. This was on the 27th of May, 2020. Wow. Well, okay. he already knows. Yeah, we already they, they know. They already know so yeah. but... Um, <laughs> Really I quick, hope, yeah, how I hope are you guys moving home. out of your parents for the first time? Happy, sad, didn't care? Oh, I moved out when I was 18. I was so delighted to get out of there. My mom was crying. I was like, bye. <laughs> I moved out when I was like 23, 24. I fucking bawled my eyes out. Oh, no. Can't relate. Um, I guess I was kind of in between because I was living five days a week for college. But then when I moved out full time, it didn't hit me until like a couple months later when I hadn't physically, physically seen my parents in the better part of a year. Yeah. And that was weird. I got to be a gay in the city. It was very good. Hell yeah. I was so ready to go. This next one is from The Big Wild. Bartandalus? Bartandalus? Okay. Bartandalus. Yes. It's the bad guy from Final Fantasy XIII, who, the big Pope head that sings. Um, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Brian, Neve, and Joho. The time has come to announce the winner of the best spice tournaments I ran on this Discord. I think it's important that the people know the results of the mighty competition and find out which herb or spice is truly the strongest of them all. Much love from a mountain in Australia, the big world. P.S. The winner is paprika. Well, yeah. Yeah, I thought about yeah, that. Yeah. Come on. Was it hot what, or sweet, though? Fucking rosemary gonna do shit? Yeah. Pine? Paprika. Get out of here. Paprika's solid. Like yeah. It's yeah. Got, it's, it's so not, versatile. Absolutely. Uh, for fuck's sake. This is from fuck-ass Deku, not a bird. Oh, jeez. Can we just... Okay, if ever he, if ever that person comes up, can we just fucking just skip him? Fake Brian eats the maggot cheese to keep the sludge flowing. What the fuck does that what even does mean? What does that even mean, Deku? What shut, the fuck does that even shut mean? The Jesus fuck up. Christ, I am so fucking sick of Deku. Gee, like I tried to ruin him by turning his face into a sticker, and he's just loved it. Yeah, no, you see, that's the problem. That's the problem with the real little shits. You try and throw things at them, and they just absorb it into their little sludge pile and get stronger. He's listening to this podcast while he's doing maintenance in that apartment complex. And you know what? I hope you don't fix that fucking air conditioner. Yeah, I hope it doesn't work. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, Paprika Papa of the nameless wants me to say I admit that I took the email address let's fight a boss at gmail.com so I could say ass let's fight a boss at gmail.com a few times yeah. <laughs> ass let's fight a boss at gmail.com it was the long con all along long con loot drop do we have stuff for the people to look at on the internet I yeah got, I got Johan's album you do mm-hmm Got that Mega 64 Sad Day story, which is just a very funny anecdote. Niamh? Um, I got a song. I've been listening to a lot of Alma and the Sniffers. I think that's how you say it. it really good punk vibes. Uh, really like their music. Are they Irish? I think they're Australian or okay. maybe from New Zealand. Do you have a specific song? or um, Hurts. Hurts. Okay. I have a YouTube channel called Bullet Wanderer. Found out a co-worker of mine has a YouTube channel and he is a motorcycle enthusiast and he is dr- currently driving his motorcycle all around France and he's doing vlogs on it. Oh, deadly. Brendan, you sneaky little bollocks. I'm so proud of you. And it's just his Irish accent is so fucking good. I think he's from Waterford. It's a good accent. Loves dogs, loves beagles. And he has a vintage bike that he takes amazing care of. And it's just so fun to see someone who has like a hobby that they are living their best life with, and like I'm, he's he's fine with this being on the internet. Does he listen to this? Yeah, he does. He watches your videos. He told me, but he, he's very shy. And thanks he's, for watching my videos, Brendan. I hope you have a nice trip. He's a little bit scared of me, and I like to keep it that way. And like he knows Brian, that. That describes so many of your relationships. It's kind of fucked up. I just. Younger boys need to be a bit afraid of me. <laughs> I like being a weird, intimidating big brother. No, I get it. Brian's like me. We're predators. Yeah. We're like at the top of the food chain. Yeah, sure. Uh, Brendan's a lovely fella. And like, if, if, if you enjoy these videos, leave a comment saying, good man yourself, Brendan. He'll, he'll, he'll know what you mean. And that's going to do it for another very hot and sleepy episode of Let's Fight a Boss. But the most important thing is that we're still here. See you guys next time. Good man yourself, Brendan. <laughs>